Indeed, Braves country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic ball of Braves country baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves country today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves country tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. like me. You're listening to Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Hey, Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free, and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood 4-2 to two 
but with one inning more to play. And when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a Paul-like silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought, if only Casey could, but get a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did Jimmy Blake, and the former was a hoodoo, while the latter was a cake. So upon that stricken multitude, grim, melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. Then from 5,000 throats and more rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley It rattled in the dell. It pounded on the mountain and recoiled upon the flat for Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile lit Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance flashed in Casey's eye, a sneer cooled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air. And Casey stood a-watching it in a haughty grandeur there. Closed by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar, like the beating of a storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire! shouted someone on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With the smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the dun sphere flew. But Casey ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddened thousands. An echoed answered fraud, but one scornful look from Casey and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence, his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in the favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville, mighty Casey has struck out. Casey at the bat, at the bat. Ernest Lawrence Thayer, published June 3rd, 1888. San Francisco Examiner. Hey, Braves Country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic ball of Braves Country Baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves baseball all year long. 
jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines, react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Braves country. Looking forward to a great Atlanta Braves season. See y'all all the time. Line Up for Braves Country by DM McGee, 2024.
A is for Aaron, the hammer and Hank, the real home run king. Take that to the bank. B is for Bobby. Cox never cowered. He'd give Blue quite an earful on his way to the showers. C is for Chipper. Don't call him Larry. He would show up in Shea, the Mets he would bury. D is for David. Justice he'd bring. A game six solo brought Atlanta their ring. E is for Eddie Matthews. 512 bombs away. Let skies from Boston to Milwaukee to the A. F is for Fred. McGriff dog biting crime. A fire was lit the day he arrived. G is for Glavin. Southpaw winds and kicks. Changing speeds east and west. A gem in game six. H is for Harry and his brother George Wright. The father of baseball, Boston Pennants in flight. I is for inning, ending double play. Riley to Ozzie to Olsen all day. J is for Jones. Andrew let her fly. And his gloves in center is where singles would die. K is for strikeouts. A plenty from Strider. The quads in the stash getting swings from that slider. L is for Lopez. Javi to BMAC. Travis and Smurf, we've been lucky to see that. M is for Mad Dog. He won 355. Could swat flies with the changeup and still bust you inside. N is for Necro. He got to the hall by bending and knuckling and floating that ball. O is for Otis. Old Nixon could fly. The catch at the wall baffled our eyes. P still for Peterson. We were all rocking pearls. With Eddie and Jorge, we were out of this world. Q is a quandary for why Dale is not in. Murphy MVPs again and again. R is for ranking, the top pitcher's lore. Remember Kid Nichols, 107 war. S is for Smoltzy, the big three in the hall. When the game's on the line, you give John the ball. T is for Tyler, Matzik and the gift of 2021, the entire night shift. U is for Chavez, but we say Uncle Jesse. The frames, the release, kept the batters guessing. V is Van Weeren. Skip Carry 2. Don Ernie Joe. The Tales from the Booth. W is Warren. Spawn Johnny Sane. They'd ride him in Boston and then pray for rain. X is Mazzoni. Yeah, X marked the spot. Leo rocked next to Bobby and his pitchers stayed hot. Why it makes us feel young. The game's main appeal. Chopping through the battery, there's no better feel. Z is for zip, boom, bam, ram a lama ding dong Throughout the summer, we sing that song. From AJ to eyeglasses and a hell of a pen. Mad Max, Uncle Charlie, win after win. A cannon from short, an RC you later. Acuna Matata, there is no one greater. Though you can't fit them all when you just ate a Z. Think of your favorites in the rafters we see. I started with three, then 10, 25, 47, 31, and of course 29. Let's not forget 21, 41, 35. The great 44 or 755 an old number six who led his great teams the pennants were flying it felt like a dream from boston to milwaukee to atlanta's tbs a family a tradition braves country's the best lineup for braves country by dm mcgee 2024 
Hey Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by Hey Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Braves Country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves Baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Join the country club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one-of-a-kind emojis, to display your Braves pride throughout the ball game. You'll also get instant access to our video drops. Members only chat, wallpapers, and more is on the way. Help support Braves Country Radio. Join the country club today. You're in Braves country. Welcome in, Braves country. As uh, I'm turning these lights off behind me, always getting ready for the game and getting ready to talk about what the hell we gonna do now. Y'all went out and hurt Strider, and now what the hell are we gonna do? Sky's falling. God, dog it. Oh, man, that was the worst news. Uh, in case you're just tuning in, Spencer Strider has UCL UCL damage. They haven't said it yet, but it sounds like Tommy John. If it's not Tommy John, it's probably a hefty, hefty, lengthy stint on the IL. Don't even know if we would see him. It's just sprained. Well, I we would probably get him back late in the season, but that would be a big if. And at that point, what would he even be able to contribute? The worst possible time for a pitcher to get hurt with the Tommy John's type injury for a team is this time of year. Cause you didn't get anything out of them and you're probably not going to get them back until very late next year. If everything goes right. So hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's not looking good as far as Spencer Strider's concerned. Now the good news is the Braves have a lot of, a lot, a lot of depth and we are going to see how that depth unfolds. I saw a lot of folks on Twitter questioning who they're going to go out and get. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. 
Don't even pay attention to the nonsense. Don't listen to the knuckleheads. They might have 20,000 followers. I don't give a damn. The Braves are not going to go out and make some major trade in the next week or so to bring in, and, and, and they're not going to sign Trevor Bauer. That's, that's not what the Braves do. It's not what any successful general manager does in Major League Baseball. What they do is they see what they have, and they'll evaluate it over the next few months and then heading into the trade deadline if we're a competitive baseball team, and we still should be. We still should be right there in the mix, assuming we, the whole pitching staff doesn't fall apart. Then there could be a possibility for the Braves to go out and make a trade at someone at the deadline. But as far as April and May and probably June are, con are concerned, there's not much of a chance. Um, once again, Robert, that's wrong. Uh, buddy <laughs> first pitch is not 7 30 um but anyways um it's it's always in the information on the uh on, on the page y'all braves always are 7 20 first pitch on in at home games unless it's a national broadcast we're coming your way braves country today as uh we come your way every single ball game pre-game show and uh the game will be getting underway here shortly but more important things to talk about than that is the fact that Spencer Strider is gone. He's probably gone for the season. He's probably gone until 2026, if we're being honest. This is the same type of injury that a lot of pitchers have had that take typically the best case scenario. It's 18 months on the shelf. Well, think about that. 18 months from now is essentially late October, mid October. And that's if they, if they had the surgery today, mid October of 2025, which shuts you down for it. It does. It just, it's for all intents and purposes. If it's Tommy John surgery, you can pretty much bet that if he has any kind of contributions to the 2025 team, it would be late in the season and probably out of the bullpen or some kind of an opener right? Some kind of a role where he's not asked to pitch more than a couple innings. Remember they tried to bring back Walker Bueller last year in September and they ended up shutting him down and now he still isn't back. Same thing. So just assume that the Braves are probably not going to have Spencer Strider if it's Tommy John surgery until the spring of 2026. And it sucks, but this is literally the worst time you can have the injury you'd much rather have it either they're at the end of your season hell even in the middle of the season because at least you got something out of the player but instead we're looking at now obviously from a trade aspect the worst possible time to do it would be the day after the trading deadline because you're not prepared for it and away we go but look the players that the braves have in place it has been a situation where they've set up realized they went out there and they got a lot of depth at the pitching starting pitching position because of guys like Charlie Morton and Max Freed and Chris sale. The biggest thing that concerns you if as a Braves fan, it's not so much that we lost one of the big guns is that he was the sturdiest of all of the pitchers. Now this will be his second Tommy John surgery, but he has not been an Atlanta brave since the injury. So since he's been Atlanta brave, he's gone out there, he's towed the rubber and away we go. But his, he said his, uh, elbow was barking at him. And the moment I heard that last night after the post game show, I, I, uh, heard a couple of comments we're going to go ahead and play a snicker real quick, but this this was last night, and this kind of lets you know where it's going. This is, uh, see, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to towards, well, you know what? I'll just play the whole, well, let me go in about midway through it, so we're probably coming in the middle of it, but towards here is when they start asking him, uh, asking snicker about Strider. 
that everybody else sees. I mean, it's his stuff pick, you know, it ticks up. Those are big innings right there early on to just kind of bridge the game. And, and like I said, all those guys, you, you know, you keep it in check and throw zero up, you give your t- team a chance to come back. Kelnick double, did you, from your vantage point, did you think that was getting down? Like, what did you see when those guys are kind of converting? Yeah, I mean, you know, they were shrinking the infield, so it's kind of a long way for the, the middle infielder to go. Kind of position pretty well. Do you think that uh, this was just one of those nights for him? I know his below was down a little bit. Yeah, well, yeah, I thought it was one of those nights, and he came in and he was complaining about his elbow. So he's going to get an MRI in the morning. We'll find out what's going on. Was, that, was it just barking, or have you heard from Joel? Uh, no, it's just I just know he's going to have it checked out. He, he didn't. He was kind of uncomfortable with how it was feeling. So they examined him here, and they're going to get more an MRI done tomorrow. No, I just I think it might have been just throughout the game. I don't know. He didn't. I, I wasn't in there to talk to him, so I just know I just got the new. You know, heard back when he went in, he was complaining about his elbow. So there you have that, and the biggest thing that I took from it before we ever got the news this morning about how they were they were once they started saying they were going to drop the news at four p.m. Then it turned to four twenty or whatever it was. I knew it was bad because if it's something just going forward, just so you know, if it's something that's not that bad, not that, uh, serious, essentially you will get some of these, um, folks that'll, that'll come out and they'll say, well, we'll see what happens, but, uh, we're, we're going to let it rest. Da, 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 da. Once they start talking about a 4 p.m deal 4 20 p.m deal when it's like se- you know, several hours in the future that tells me that they're trying to figure out the best way to word it and just doing this for as long as been following all this stuff it's never a good thing when they have when they have the times set up and they say at this time we're going to have a, a news release it's never good so what what you can take from this is they're probably going to get a couple of uh, second opinions, third opinions, that kind of stuff. And then at the best case scenario at this, at this point, it, it would be, there have been a couple of times where, where pitchers have had UCLA sprains and they've shut them down for like a month, maybe six weeks. And then maybe they get ramped back up. So it's even best case scenario. I would say after the all-star break is when he would come back. But the, the tone in the room at the press conference yesterday, last night, and at the, uh, the uh, release today, it smells and it sounds like it's a lot worse than just a couple of months. Because remember there was, Remember when uh, Freed got hurt last year and Kyle Wright got hurt last year? Of course, Kyle Wright eventually gets gets shut down. But there was not the 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 question timeline. It was an immediate timeline that they had. So that's what I'm taking from it. What you can look at short term, short term, because I believe Bryce Elder just pitched again. Most likely, Bryce Elder will come up and take that fifth spot in the rotation. Most likely, that's what would happen. Now, I still think you're going to get some SS AJ, AJ Smith Shaver in the near future, but he got kind of smacked around. I think it was last night, three earned runs on a triple A, going about five innings, and he, he had some problems with his command they may not be quick to go jump to him. But the long-term idea is that A.J. smith Shaver is going to be one of the, w- one of the guns in the, uh, in the rotation by 2025 at the latest. Well, this just speeds it up. You've got Hirsch and Waldrop, but once again, we've talked about this in the preseason, they're not going to throw him into the fire. And the idea that I can remember people last year were saying that the that uh, you need to go ahead and put him in the bullpen, get ready for the playoffs. Talking about Hurston Waldrop, like they're playing some video game, like you're just grabbing a talent off with, with the 
you know, that can throw a hundred miles an hour and he, he's got a computer rating of X, Y, or Z, and you can put him in there and everything will be fine. You can't throw these kids, especially when you spent a first round draft pick on him, can't throw him into the fire. You've got to bring him along in a perfect world. Bryce Elder comes up and pitches as well as he did the first half of last season. And I think he can, I don't think Bryce Elder is some lost cause. You get Bryce Elder to eat some innings. You get Shaver, who's going to have to come in because this is this won't be the last pitcher that misses time. This, this is what this is. It's normally not this devastating, but usually these starting pitchers miss time. Just the way it is nowadays. They've got them ramping up. They've got them throwing 100 miles an hour, and the arm has not evolved to what these teams want them to do. There's a reason why guys pitched for years and years and years and never had the the Tommy John is because they threw as fast as they as they could within reason well you got guys now who are amping up torquing out I mean if you think about Spencer Strider and his height and his in the leverage he has to use to get his fastball up as high as it was we kept mentioning it last night it was up around 95 96 and you know I I, I didn't want to be a hex so I didn't really bring it up but at the time, I'm thinking to myself, that's not his typical velo. Like, what is going on here? Well, this is his second Tommy John now. Now, the big question we're going to have, and could this be the first of, of the big, long contracts that don't work out? Remember, all these contracts that Anthopolis has signed up for has, they've they've all realistically panned out. No major injury. Well, this is the first one that it looks like we're going to get a major injury. And how does that affect the the not just the trade deadline this year, but how does it affect their view for 25 and moving on? Because you're essentially going to have dead money that you're going to be paying Spencer Strider. And oh, by the way, Max Fried is still a free agent at the end of the year. So we'll have more time to talk about who they could be narrowing in on. I, I saw someone else talk about Garrett Crochet on Twitter. <laughs> I'm like, dude, what? And there was somewhat of a serious tone because they just saw Crochet dominate the Braves lineup. You are not ever going to trade a stud like Garrett Crochet in the first year of his deal. It would be the, stu- the the general manager would be fired before the ink dried on that on that trade. So just stop that already. That's just not absolute. That, that's absolutely not happening. They're not going to go out and get one of these young kids that you see and you you see them on the highlight reel and you're going to start wondering, well, well, can we go get him? No, the the guys who are trade bait are going to be guys at the end of their contracts, or maybe they have 18 months left on their contract. But by the time you get to the trade deadline, it's closer to like 16, 17 months left. Those are usually your trade baits. Trevor Bowers not getting signed by the Atlanta Braves. They have been emphatic about how they are not going to sign him. And I know there's a lot of folks that want to see him get a second chance. And I get that. And I, and I was never opposed to, to, to Trevor Bauer. But it's not happening. And I do think there may be something in the the fact that, yes, he was found not guilty of of the bogus charges, but there's there's a different underlying factor about Trevor Bauer. He has never been very popular in any locker room, any dugout that he's ever been in. He's been he's kind of been known to be a selfish ass. That's not the Braves. That's as, as Freddie and Chipper and all of them used to say, that's, that's not the Braves way. So that's another reason why you're not going to see them bring a cancer into the clubhouse. doesn't matter how well he can pitch that one time every five days. So I'm thinking more likely what's going to happen is you're going to get a very low end starter added at the deadline one that's not going to wow you, but one that can eat some innings and get you to the postseason. Because once you get to the postseason, you still have Max Fried. You still have 
Chris Sale. Charlie Morton is still an innings eater. And who knows what we're going to get out of Bryce Elder and can ideally A.J. smith Shaver would take that next step to be your number three or number four in the postseason. And with this offense and that bullpen, that can still win us games. The one guy is not going to lose it. Would they just have to make sure that it doesn't start to spiral out of control and you start pushing other pitchers for you know further in games than you normally would because you're because your depth at your rotation is lost. We still got guys like Darius Vines. We still got guys like Winnens. Dylan Dodd, it wouldn't shock me if Dylan Dodd gets gets a start in the near future, but realize if he comes in, don't think he's the answer. He's just filling a spot. Braves have done this for the last several years. You'll see a guy come up, then he'll get pushed back down, which means you can't bring him back up for about 15 days. I think it's actually 11, but they'll go on to, to the next pitcher because once you bring a guy up and bring him down for one season, in one season, that is their uh, their move. So after that, you can move them up and down all you want all year long. You get three of those, basically three years of being able to, as they call them, options. So it's not three options total. It's you got option in 2025, 2024, 2023. That's how it works. So we're probably, once again, we've been averaging around 12 to 14 starting pitchers for the last several years, and it looks like that's where we're heading again. But, hey, may, maybe we get great news, and maybe it's only a two-and-a-half month deal and he's back by the all-star break bust out all your prayer beads whatever whatever you believe in pray to that because we need the help because good night irene spencer strider is done uh real quick brandon fought tonight i think the braves bats well after this news i don't know but originally i, I thought that the braves bats would uh be much better tonight i'm gonna take the braves to win eight to three I think the bullpen will do a great job, but I just hope Max Free can get through five innings of five, six innings, get us somewhere close to a quality start in the Braves. First time seeing Brandon Fott. So remember, he's a good pitcher. It might be tough the first time through the order, but the Braves will get to him. All right, got to step aside. We'll be back in a flash. It is time for first pitch and all that stuff. Thank you. Me, you can't smoke like me. So don't try and be like me. Let's party together. There's something, I'll say there's something kind of about a kid that's never played baseball. Baseball is a beautiful thing. It's more beautiful than an old park. It's asymmetrical and quirky, but even in a dome with artificial turf, it's beautiful. The way the field fans out, the choreography of the sport, the pace and rhythm of it, the fact that that pace and rhythm allows for conversation and reflection and opinion and comparison. In right field, the crowd is tormenting strawberries, singing Daryl, Daryl. Little roller up along first, behind the man! There's a fly ball deep to left. It's on its way. There it goes. And the Yankees are going to the World Series. Aaron Boone. Ground ball stabbed by Folk. He has it. He underhands to first for the first time in 86 years. The Red Sox have won baseball world championship. Can you believe it? It's a pastime. It's something you do. It's entertainment. Something you watch. And it's a shared experience, something you, you talk about and read about. But you can apply those same three criteria to other things. What makes baseball special is that it's the best game that's ever been devised. Smith corks one in the right down the line. It may go. Go crazy, folks. Go crazy. Sure as God made green apples, someday the Chicago Cubs are going to be in the World Series. A little bouncer slowly toward Bryant. He will glove it in front of Rizzo. It's in time. And the Chicago Cubs win the World Series. Cubs win. What a lucky break. The good Lord wants the Cubs to win. How can you not be romantic about baseball? 
If baseball is about caring, about loyalty and rivalry. Braves fans are on their feet hoping for some kind of a bleeder or a seeing eye single. Here's the one two pitch. Fastball hit high and deep down the right field line. It's going back, back, back. Is it fair? Is it zip, boom, bam, it's gone. Ramalama Ding gone by three run shot. And your Atlanta Braves have taken a one run lead. A hanger, a banger, and she's gone, baby. There's a very peaceful thing. It was created and played in pastures and meadows. There's grass, there's outdoors, there's everything that people thought was American and feel about America you get in a ballpark. And it's the wonder of walking through that dark tunnel and seeing a huge open space where men play the little boys game. I believe in the Church of Baseball. I've tried all the major religions and most of the minor ones. I know things. For instance, there are 108 beads in a Catholic rosary and there are 108 stitches in a baseball. I prefer metaphysics to theology. You see, there's no guilt in baseball and it's never boring. It's a long season and you gotta trust it. I've tried them all I really have and the only church that truly feeds the soul day in, day out is the Church of Baseball. If there's a bigger thing going on right now, I don't know what it is. We're down to one strike here. Guriel, the last hope for the Houston Astros. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung on, bounced over to Dansby. Dansby fires it over to first. And here comes the dog pile. Fire the cannons in the battery. Do the chop. All throughout Braves country, pop that top! Your Atlanta Braves have won it all! girls and boys and join us for Braves Country Baseball. You're listening live and the scene is Truist Park in Atlanta, Georgia, where we're set to bring you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves. Hi, I'm Mac McGee. Here are your starting lineups for today's action. Leading off and playing second base for the Arizona Diamondbacks is Cattell Marte. Two home runs, five RBI, one stolen base, batting 353. Corbin Carroll, batting second, playing center field for the Arizona Diamondbacks. 
He is five for 26 on the year, one RBI, a 192 batting average. Lourdes Gariel playing left field and batting third, 303 average, three home runs, 11 RBI, and a stolen base. Christian Walker playing first and batting cleanup, three home runs, eight RBI, a 212 average. Eugenio Suarez is playing third base and batting fifth with one home run, seven RBI, and a 355 clip. The designated hitter tonight for the Diamondbacks, Randall Gritchick, his first at bats of the season. Gabby Moreno is behind home plate. He's four for 23 on the year, five RBI, a 174 average. Jake McCarthy is in right field and batting 308 with one RBI, four for 13 on the year. And batting ninth and playing shortstop, it's Blaze Alexander. The young rookie is 5 for 14 on the year, a 357 batting average, one home run, and three RBI, along with one stolen base. On the mound for the Arizona Diamondbacks, it's Brandon Fott. He has a 1.8 ERA with five innings pitched, five hits allowed, six strikeouts on the year. He'll be going head to head with Max Freed. Thunderdome is 0 and 0 on the year. He pitched two thirds of an inning. In his first start of the year in Philadelphia, it was knocked out with no decision, one strikeout, three walks, and two hits allowed. Backing up Mad Max in the bottom of the first inning, batting leadoff and playing right field for your Atlanta Braves. It's Ronald Acuna Jr., three RBI, one stolen base, batting 250. Ozzie Albies batting second, playing second. Two home runs, seven RBI, one stolen base, batting 320. Austin Riley, batting third, playing third. He has one home run, five RBI, five for 26 on the year. And Big Matt Olson, seven for 26 on the year with a 269 batting average. The Ice House has two home runs and six RBI. Marcel Ozuna, your designated hitter and batting fifth. The Big Zoo has three home runs, six RBI, batting 269. Michael Harris the second will be patrolling center field for your Atlanta Braves. He is 8 for 24 on the year for a 333 clip, one home run and two RBI. Orlando Arcia is batting 7th, the 458 batting average and two RBI. And behind home plate, batting 8th, it's Travis Darnold. TDA has 3 RBI and a 267 average. And batting ninth for your Atlanta Braves and playing left field, it's Jared Kelnick. Kelnick is 7 of 12 for a 583 batting average to start the season. He has three RBI and had the game tying RBI in the bottom of the ninth last night. That's your lineups for Arizona versus Atlanta, game two of a three game set. Atlanta won game one, six to five in walk off fashion in the 10th inning. Game time temperatures tonight 67 degrees at first pitch, climbing down into the low 60s by the end of the ball game. Braves are minus 195 on the money line. The over under is nine and a half. Calling balls and strikes behind home plate tonight, it's Mark Rippiger. Guarding first base, Adam Hamari. Second base will be manned by Vic Carapaza and down the third base line, it's Alex McKay. Well, it's about that time. Grab you a cold one. Find you an armchair. It's Braves Diamondbacks game two of a three-game series, the Braves could win this series tonight. Get your game face on, Braves country. Braves country your Atlanta Braves are wearing their white tops white pants blue lettering excuse me red lettering red numerals outlined in blue in the names in navy blue on the back blue ball caps with the red bill and the white a Arizona is wearing their traditional gray uniforms top to bottom with red lettering and black outline Max Freed is throwing his last few warm-up tosses. Here's a crazy prediction. I say he, he drops his ERA tonight. <laughs> it won't be difficult. 
He comes in with a 40.5 ERA after that disaster that was last week. But, hey, we all got bad days. We're just glad he's going back to the bump after the terrible news about Spencer Strider. Sean Murphy is still injured, Robert. He uh, the, the best timeline with that would be late April would be best best case scenario. But they haven't given an actual timeline. They are uh, kind of seeing how it goes. It's a grade two strain. So it's better. The, the, the grade strain, grade three strain usually keeps you out six to eight weeks. Grade two is usually somewhere around the three, four week range, sometimes a little more. But we are just about set. And yes, sir, it is baseball time in Braves country. First pitch on the way from Max Freed is swung on, fouled straight back. It's on one. Braves nothing, Arizona nothing. Top of the first inning, a 92-mile-an-hour slider was in on the hands to get it going. The 0-1 pitch swung on. That ball is belted deep into the seats, and it is one nothing Arizona. Uh, just like last night, Cattell Marte leads off with the home run. It was a 94-mile-an-hour. They're calling it a slider, but if you watched the movie 61, it sure didn't slide. And the game starts off with the bang. Arizona leads it one nothing. Just bad location. It was sitting middle in. Might as well have been on a tee. So just like that, one nothing. And that'll bring up the left-handed bat of Corbin Carroll. Corbin Carroll takes a swing and a miss at the first pitch. 93 mile an hour fastball right down the pipe. It's on one. The 0 1 pitch from Freed kicks and deals. Swing and a miss. Nice. Bender, the curveball. 75 coming in. It's 0 2. We'll keep you up to date on what's going on in the world of Major League Baseball. And of course, we are aware the Final Four is going on. So we'll keep you up to date with that. Right now, Purdue is pummeling NC State by 10. The 0 2 pitch down and away. It's 1 and 2. Arizona won, Braves nothing. Just getting going here. The one-two pitch, swing, and not only does he miss, the bat goes airborne into the Arizona Diamondbacks dugout or towards the dugout, and it slaps the screen. It appears he got a piece of the ball, but he lost the handle at the same time. I thought he had missed. So a one-two count as Carroll will get back into the box. Max Fried now comes set. The one-two count. Braves won game one of this series, six to five. You went to bed early and gave up on it. It was a heck of a comeback. The one-two swung on that ball is rifled into left field, down for a base hit, and it's a single for Corbin Carroll. One on, nobody out. Just kind of went with it. Braves are were playing in a shift in the infield, and he hit it right between the five-six hole, where you traditionally would see the shortstop stand. Zona one, Lana nothing. The first pitch on the way is a curveball right there at the knees. It's 0 1. Mark Rippiger is the umpire. Did some research. Thank you, Raymond. I didn't realize it slid on me. Stat tracker should be back to normal as Freed flips it back over to first. Did some research on Rippiger before the game, and evidently Mark Rippiger is the 0-1 pitch. Misses outside wide. Looked like the changeup. It's 1-1. One one. He tends to umpire higher scoring games than most because he calls a very close zone. 
So just a tick above what the average umpire calls, he tends to call more walks. Because the 1-1 one, one misses high 2-1. and one. So that's what you're looking at for tonight in all likelihood is a tight zone and less strikeouts than normal. The 2-1 pitch swung on. Popped it back foul, two and two. Who does that favor? Brandon Fott is a bit of a strikeout pitcher, so it may actually favor Max Fried to a degree, but I, as, as long as he's being even on both sides, I don't think it matters a whole lot. As long as you're not getting a deal where one guy's getting a wider zone than the other. The 2-2 two -two from Max Fried swung on, laced down the line, foul, We'll do it again. Looked like that was his bender, 75-mile-an-hour curveball that got a little too much of the plate. Typically, he'd like that a little down and a little in. Thankfully, Guriel couldn't keep it straight. So a 2-2 count, the pitch. Swung on, rifled into right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. And Corbin Carroll is going to stop at second base. And they got runners on first and second, nobody out. Max Fried struggling once again. Once again, Arizona's hitting them where they ain't. The Braves had the had the shift on, and it went in between first and second. Would have been a tough play even, even on a double play defense. The first pitch on the way to Christian Walker. Swung on and ripped into left field. Ball's going to get down. Here comes Christian Car uh, Corbin Carroll, excuse me. And he will slide in, and the Arizona leads it 2 to nothing. On the play, Gurriel stops at second, so you still got runners on first and second. And nobody out. This is really concerning if you're a Braves fan. This is two starts in a row. Max Fried just has not had it. Corbin Carroll runs like the wind, so really not much of a chance of Kelnick to throw him out. Thankfully, Guriel went station to station. Kranitz is going out there and talk to him. And I like to see that. I, I hate when they wait so long to talk to these pitchers that are obviously struggling. A lot of times he's not out there telling him anything he doesn't know. It's just more of to catch his breath. And maybe go over strategy. The first pitch on the way to Eugenio Suarez, who's a dangerous hitter in his own right, taking up top for a ball. It's 1 0. Suarez, one of the better right handed hitters. As the 1-0 pitch misses high 2-0. Really good addition for this Arizona team. So a 2-0 count. First and second, nobody out. Two across already. The pitch. High ball three, 3-0. Three The 3-0 count, runners on first and second. Freed comes set, the pitch. Inside, ball four. So Max Freed, just like that, walks a batter, and the bases are now loaded and nobody out. We talked about uh, that during the pregame show, Raymond. Uh, Bauer is absolutely not happening. That's uh, that's not the easy answer. That's the wrong answer. First pitch on the reign of Grandel Kritchik is inside for a ball. It's 1-0. He comes with too much baggage. And not to mention the fact they've been very vocal telling people that, they, that the Braves have no interest in Trevor Bauer. They've said it a few times over the last uh, two years. The 1-0 pitch right there inside for a strike. Finally gets a strike. It's 1-1. One
So a 1-1 count. Free trying to stop the bleeding. You don't really have Jesse Chavez to lean on this time either, Max. The 1-1 pitch swung on and roasted foul down the third base line, 1-2. Arizona's come into this inning very aggressive, and you wonder if the pregame might have been talking about the fact they figured Max Fried was going to come out aggressive trying to bust the zone because he struggled so much in the first outing. And Arizona has come out aggressive in their own right. Bases loaded, nobody out the one-two pitch. Swung on, that ball is laced into deep second base, backhanded by Ozzy Albies. He has no play. And it's an infield single. It's 3 nothing. He really had nowhere to go. Maybe if Orlando Arcia cuts to the bag, he might have been able to shovel it. But Grichik runs well. He wasn't going to be able to throw him out with his, with his uh, weight heading towards left field. Arcia essentially would have had to go over and play second base like a first base bag and make the stretch. First pitch on the way from Freed to Moreno is a curveball up top. It's 1 0. The 1 0. Lefty, righty. The pitch. Right there on the outer edge, 1 and 1. I'll tell you what this is for Anthopolis. So this is a perfect opportunity in the middle innings to get Max Freed to sign an extension. You could probably low ball the hell out of him right now. So bases loaded, nobody out, the 1-1 one, one count, the pitch. Just kisses the black on the outer edge, it's 1-2. and two. Moreno didn't like it. It's one of the more vocal catchers I've seen when given a strike. He lets the umpire know he doesn't like it, which is odd because normally catchers – take the take the stance of okay then give me that call the one two pitch swung on come back her to the mound and freed somehow screws that up it goes through arcia gets an out steps on the bag and the throw to first is late so it's going to be a six force fielder's choice at second if freed's able to make that play he would have been able to come home to Darno to prevent the run and may have actually gotten the double play. It's almost like he had a hole in his glove. I thought I thought for sure he was going to make that play. Max Fried is usually a very sure-handed defensive player. So instead, runners on the corners, one out, Braves trail by four. First pitch on the way. Fastball right there at the knees, it's 0-1. The 0 1 right there. First strike, it's 0 and 2. Yeah, Ashley, uh, the Trevor Bauer thing just isn't happening. It's one of those things that, that Braves fans have to put to bed. I understand the intrigue, but they have made it very clear they're, they're not going to sign him. The 0 2 pitch is swung on and lift into right field. That's going to get in front of Acuna. That run will score. And. It's 5 nothing Arizona, runners on first and second. Runner at first had to hold up a second. They had to make sure that the ball wasn't going to be caught. Just hit it on the edge of the bat, and just Acuna's playing so far and so deep on McCarthy, which is a little dumbfounding. He's not a home run hitter. And Acuna's heels were maybe five to seven feet in front of the, the warning track. First pitch on the way to Alexander is right there for a strike. It's 0-1. The 0-1. Curveball down and in, 1-1. One one. <laughs> I don't know, Robert. This is pretty bad. <laughs> The only thing I'll say, if you're Snicker and in your, you know, Kranitz for that matter is the 1-1 pitch swung on, chopped over to third. Riley's got it, steps on the bag. Force out at third. And that's all he'll get. 
He was looking to throw down over to first. But Alexander's got some wheels and he beat it out pretty easily. But what I was going to say is he pitched so poorly and pitched one inning his last time out. You've got to let him work through it. Come hell or high water. He's got to figure it out. First pitch on the way from Max Freed is a curveball up top. It's 0 1. It's not going to do you any good to have Max Fried sit down again and go th and rip through your bullpen. Remember, we don't have another day off as the 0-1 pitch is swung on to slice down the right field line. And that is fair into the corner. One run will score. It is six to nothing. The second run will score. No, they were gonna they're gonna hold him up. They thought about sending him. Looking at the Arizona feed as well, they thought about sending him and they, they put on the brakes at the last second. Good job by Ronald Acuna Jr. to get the ball off the wall and fire it into the infield. But it's 6 nothing Arizona. Good night, Irene. But, you, but you've got to get Max Freed as Corbin Carroll comes back to the plate. Corbin Carroll won for one like a lot of folks tonight. First pitch up top, Mrs. Heights, 1-0. You've got to get Max Freed to give you four innings, bare minimum. I mean, he can't keep going out there and giving you one inning. It's going to rip your bullpen apart. The 1-0 pitch right there at the knees, 2-0. They are warming up Dylan Lee in the bullpen, but I once again, I just – I, th I think you got to have the guy work out his problems. So a 2-0 count. Swung on. That ball is chopped over to Ozzy. Ozzy's got it. Flips it over to first. And that'll end the inning. But not for the Atlanta Braves. Max Freed gives up six runs. We'll grab the bats. See if we can start chipping away. Long way to go. We know this offense can get her done. We'll be back in a flash. Last night I dreamed I was a bottle of ketchup and you a mustard, which is weird because usually your mayonnaise my dreams. What do you suppose that is? Those who own dogs, you know that every time you come back from wherever you went, the dog is happy and it's jumpy and it wants to lick you in the face. Even if you just went to get mail from the mailbox, they delight in your return. If you want to take them out for a car ride, they're the first in the car. <laughs> They jump in. They don't care where it's going, but they're going somewhere. They're some of the most joyous creatures that live among us. Dogs don't live as long as we do. Every single day a dog lives is equivalent to a week of your life. If they only get one day for every week you're alive, they make every day count. I'm just suggesting that their lives have already factored in their mortality. When I look at a dog, I use that as a, as a reminder of how I should live every day of my life. While the Angels now have their own stadium in Anaheim, they used to play their home games at Dodger Stadium. In the early 1960s, the Angels were a brand new team and had to share the stadium with the Dodgers because a dedicated field had not been built for them. Eventually, in 1966, the Angels got their own ballpark. Who is he, anyhow? An actor? No. A dentist? No. He's a gambler. Then added, he's the man who fixed the World Series back in 1919. Fixed the World Series? I repeated. The idea staggered me. It never occurred to me that one man could start to play with the faith of 50 million people with the single-mindedness of a burglar blowing a safe. How did he happen to do that? He just saw the opportunity. Why is he in jail? They can't get him, old sport. He's a smart man. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball here on Braves Country Radio. Please hit that like button and smash the subscribe. Braves trail 6-0. Ronald Cunha Jr. takes the first pitch up top for a, a strike. It's 0-1. The 0-1 pitch grounds it quickly over to third. A 5-3 put out, one away. Still a long way to go in this one. You got to chip it away. You can't hit a six-run home run. So you just got to chip away and see if they can do what they did last night. This offense, we know not only did they score those four runs late, but think about the opportunities they had earlier in the game. A couple of times where they could, they had the bases loaded and really had chances 
to score. It's never over with this crew. Ozzy Albies comes to the plate. Open stance from the left side. The first pitch right down the pipe for a strike. It's 0-1. The 0-1, righty, lefty, fought, kicks and fires. Outside, wide, 1-1. One one. He went four seam, then sinker on the outer edge trying to get him to chase. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss over the top. Change up, nice pitch by Brandon Fott, 1-2. The one two count rocks and fires outside wide two and two. If you're just joining us and missed the pregame show, Spencer Strider's got UCL UCL damage, structural damage on his elbow. The two two in the dirt, ball three. So a three two count, which means best case scenario. They shut him down. He ramps back up, and he's back in about three months, two and a half, three months. Worst case scenario, we'll see you in 2026. The 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed strike three. They're calling that the sweeper. Had kind of cutter action, but, but sweeper. 84 mile. It looked like an 84 mile an hour cutter is what it looked like. Doesn't quite have the sweeping down action, but just kind of took a pause in time for Albies to miss. That'll bring Austin Riley to the pick, plate. Riley takes the first pitch right down the pipe for a strike. It's 0 1. You got to figure Brandon Fott sitting there with the six run lead. He's going to be aggressive. He knows the only thing that could get him in trouble is walks. The 0 1 pitch swung on, grounded over to first. Uh, excuse me, grounded over to short. Play will be at first, a 6-3 put out, and that'll end the inning. So, 1-2-3, the Braves go. We head to the bottom, or the top of the second. Braves trail 6 to nothing. What are you putting on makeup? When you find the pumps to match your skirt. Get out in the gym, start warming up. Let's go. Here are some baseball facts that you might not have known. Kevin Euclid is known for having a very interesting batting stance. He's also known for working a lot of walks and having a great mindset at the plate. Over his 10-year career, he had 297 plate appearances that went to a 3-0 count, and every single time, he didn't swing the bat. Francisco Liriano, in 2012, he signed a deal with the Pirates, but the contract was quickly voided. This is because he broke his arm trying to scare his kids on Christmas, but the deal went through a few months later. Armchair. <laughs> John McGraw's New York Giants had never really recovered from the Merkel boner, the base running error that cost them the pennant in 1908. Though they remained a perennial National League power with superb pitchers like Christy Mathewson and Rube Marquard and won the pennant in 1911, they couldn't seem to win a World Series. Then, in 1912, after dominating the league throughout the season, they faced one of the greatest of all Boston Red Sox teams in the World Series. The Red Sox had won 105 games, an American League record, and their intimidating lineup included Harry Hooper, Tris Speaker, and a dazzling fastball pitcher named Smokey Joe Wood. Smokey Joe Wood was a pitcher who, though not remembered nearly as well as Walter Johnson, was at his peak his equal, and such that in the 1912 season they both had these extraordinary streaks of winning 16 consecutive games. When he was at his prime, it was Walter Johnson who said of him, there's no man alive throws as hard as Smokey Joe would. Max Freed fires the first pitch in their first strike at the top of the zone. It's 0-1. He's set to face the 3-4-5 batters, Guriel, Walker, and Suarez. So righty, righty, righty. The lefty kicks and deals, and the 0-1's foul back out of play. It's 0-2. Guriel, one for one with the single in the first and a run scored. 
The 0-2 pitch inside just misses one and two. So a one two count. Back to what we were saying talking about the beginning of the game. Remember, this this uh umpire calls a tight zone. So the Braves are gonna have their opportunity to get back into this game. That usually means for a lot of ducks all over the pond, the one two pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Got him with the bender inside. And there's one away. Zone is six, Braves nothing, just the second inning. First pitch on the way, top of the zone curveball. Walker takes it looking, it's on one. Walker one for one. Max Freed, the wind up right there at the knees. Good pitch. Probably the best fastball he's thrown all night. 95 miles an hour on the outer cut. Knee high, it's 0-2. So an 0-2 count. Freed at 43 pitches. You'd love to see a quick inning. The pitch. Caught looking strike three. He got caught watching the paint dry, and there's two away. Walker has a disgusted look on his face, but it can't be the call because that is right there. That was over the plate, not just touching the plate. So two down. That'll bring Suarez. First pitch on the way, swung on, bang, foul down the third baseline. The curveball, it's 0-1. The 0-1 pitch, rocks and fire, swung on and fouled back. Couldn't time up that curveball, it's 0-2. So an 0-2 count. Freed comes set, fires. Right below the knees, and I mean, it looked like it may have actually touched the paint. One and two. Tough call. Good frame job by Travis, but he didn't get the, the nod. The one-two pitch. Swung on, chopped foul into the screen next to the third base dugout. The one two count. Nobody on two outs. Braves looking to climb back into this one. The pitch. Down and in, two and two. Try to get him to chase that curveball again. The one, two, swing and fouls it straight back. Just missed that one. Time you see him hit that ball, go straight back to the backstop, slapping up against the screen. You know they just missed it. So a two, two count to Suarez, the 51st pitch of the night by Mad Max. The delivery, nowhere near the zone. 96-mile-an-hour fastball tailing away. Three and two. That was his four-seamer, but it really had two-seam action. You wonder if he had the right grip on it because it sailed on him. The payoff pitch from Freed. Swung on, chopped foul down the third base side. We'll do it again. Arizona six. Atlanta, nothing. The payoff pitch. Caught looking strike three. So Max Freed comes back out and yaks the side. We'll grab the bats. The heart of the order coming to the plate. Some girls belong to the streets. I, on the other hand, belong to the insane asylums. Like one of them. I don't know which one. When people ask you, are you doing anything tonight? On a work night. No, I already did a thing today. Work was a thing. 
There, are, there will be no more things, okay? What's going on here, guys? All right, Coach, so basically it was a holding call. But these dudes started me in their fantasy league, which is cool because this dude started our quarterback, but he started our kicker and I started their defense, so it's kind of a pickle. Compromising the integrity of this game with your fantasy football leagues? Listen to me. If there was holding, you make that holding call. I don't care if it was on our team or not. I care about this game too much to let you... Coach, you started their defense too, didn't you? Yeah, you definitely started their defense. Damn right I did. I'm chair. You can't drink like me. You can't smoke like me. So don't try and be like me. Let's party together. My grandfather was a sour old man. And I liked him. He lived with us. But he uh, was out in the backyard throwing a ball when I was a little kid. And he's smoking his pipe. And he said, you, do you like baseball? And I said, yeah, yeah. He said, what do you play? And I said, I'm a shortstop. And he said, that's what I used to play. And I said, you used to play? But oh, a year or so later, I found a, uh, the local paper did a 50-year anniversary thing. And there was a reprint of a game that he had played in in 1892. And it said, Watts. His name was Fred Watts, shortstop. And he had two hits. And I thought my grandfather played baseball in 1892. So it's part of existence. It's part of our heritage. You're listening to Braves Country Radio. Please like and subscribe today. YouTube.com forward slash at Braves Country. in seeing Brandon Fott for the first time first pitch on the way is right there on the outer edge just misses it's one and oh all these Braves players have never seen Brandon Fott before we missed him on the turn we went out there to the desert and then he, shortly after that he ended up getting sent back down to the minors and really fic- re- really figured it every everything out came back up and was amazing for Arizona down the stretch the one oh down low two and oh The 2-0 pitch, kicks and deals right down below the knees. Moreno wanted that call, so did Fott. They may have had a gripe, but once again, Ripperger calls a tight zone, 3-0. So a 3-0 count, the pitch, right down the pipe. Olsen taken all the way, 3-1. That's a, we're down 6-0, 3-0 take from Olsen. He knows base runner is the only way to get on, to get back. The 3-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Sweeper just underneath his hands, 3-2. and two. So a 3-2 count. Nobody on. Bottom of the second inning. Braves trying to... Chip away at the 6 nothing lead, the 3-2 pitch. Down, inside, ball four. In the ice house. Heads on down to first. One on, nobody out. The first pitch to Ozuna is down and away for a ball. It's 1-0. and The 1-0 pitch. Righty-righty matchup. Fought kicks and fires right there at the knees. 2-0. Excuse me, 1-1, one, one, sorry. The 1-1, one, swing and a miss, it's 1-2. and two. So a 1-2 count, Marcel Ozuna. He started off pretty fairly hot for Ozuna, scorching hot compared to last spring. Three home runs already, batting 269. The 1-2 pitch, down below the knees, tried to get him to chase. Looked like his sinker, 2-2. Two and two.
Ozuna with a 950 OPS. The 2 2 pitch. Fought. Rocks and fire. Swung on that ball is rifled over to second. It's going to be caught on a line drive. Olsen heads up play, gets back to first. Tough break by Ozuna. One away. Best thing that happened on that play, though, is that the ball didn't hit the ground. If that ball hits the ground, Ozuna's never beaten that out, and they're going to have a double play. So that'll bring Michael Harris the second to the plate. The Hawk digs in. The first pitch on the way, swing and a miss. 0-1. 93 miles an hour right on the top. Be interesting to see how this Braves lineup does with Fott the second time through the lineup. You just wish Max Fried would have kept it a little closer to start out. The 0-1 pitch swung on and fouled straight back. It's 0-2. He's been going to the sinker with two strikes, so we'll see if that's where he goes with Michael. Got an 0-2 count. Olsen on first. Righty, lefty, the pitch. Down and in. Looked like he took something off that. That might have been the changeup. Same basic philosophy, trying to get him to chop it on the ground or chase. So a one-two count. Harris, the 949 OPS in his own right, the pitch. Swing, and it's a Baltimore chopper, but foul in between first and home. We'll go back to our starting positions. It's one and two. Purdue's really starting to pull away from NC State, they are pounding them by 15 with about three minutes left. The one two. Hot comes set, lets her go. Swing, and that ball is rifled off the glove of Cattell Marte. He's going to have enough time to get the ricochet and throw Olsen out at first. Olsen went back to first thinking that ball was going to be caught. It snow coned out of his glove, popped out, and just rolled very close behind him. That ball actually went. I, it's actually surprising he, he didn't hold on to it to, be, to start with. Ball was just hit so hard it popped out of his glove. So... They'll trade places. Michael Harris is a threat to go, but down six runs, he may not. The 0-1 to Orlando Arcia took the first pitch for a strike looking. 93-mile-an-hour fastball. Fought comes set the pitch. Swing and pops it up. It's going to be a can of corn, and it looks like it'll stay in play in between first and home in foul territory. That'll do it. Braves get a runner on but can't do anything with it. We'll be back in a flash here on Braves Country. Let me be great. Now, most of y'all know doing good darn well I ain't got no top tops. I got a tank top on up under this thing anyway because this Georgia weather is as bipolar as my mama and it gets hot. But you can't, I ain't got nothing. The Lord did not bless me with rhythm and he did not bless me with no tatas. Okay? Um, probably because he knew I would take the rhythm and tatas and find a pole somewhere. Hey, do you want to hang out tonight? Yeah, sure. What time were you thinking? I got to run home real quick, so why don't we meet up around 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock? Yeah. PM? Yes. Tonight? Yes. On purpose? Yeah, I was thinking that maybe we can get together at 9 since it's early in the night. That's early? Listen, just come on over and then we're going to meet up with my friends. They said the door opens around 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? Yes. PM? Oh my god. I love the game because I grew up in New York City in the late 1940s and 50s, which was the greatest intersection of baseball and place in history. We had three major league teams. All of them were good or great. Between 1947 and 1956, a New York team was in the World Series every year and won. Now it's the 10th inning. Pitcher Bob Lemon works hard on Willie May. This time, though, he walks you. You want to steal second, and you ask for the sign from Leo. Duke Steiner, Dodger center fielder, is the hero of this game. Steiner is doubled to right in the first inning, drove in two runs, and the Brooks were off and running. Boom, another double for Snyder. Hail the Duke of Flatbush. 
Baseball was almost a, a private possession of New York City, and you'd walk around through the city in October, and the sounds of baseball were everywhere, from cab radios, taverns, people come out of taverns. During the season, you sit down, come out of a tavern and say, Campy just hit one. Uh, you, you were aware of the ribbon of baseball going on around you. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Welcome back. Max Freed will go back to work. The first pitch on the way from Max is a 90 mile an hour. Up high and out of the zone, it's 1 0. The 1 0 from Max lets her go. Curve ball just grabs the edge. 1 1. Randall Gritchick, one for one with an RBI single in the first where all the damage has been done. The 1-1 one, one curve ball right there. Kiss the black. It's one and two. Nice floater. That one came in at 71 miles an hour. The one, two from Max. Darnode sets up inside. Here's the pitch. Fastball just underneath the hands almost gets him. Two and two. You know he was trying to get a caught looking there. Almost gave him away a base. So a 2-2 count. Darnode sets up on the outer edge. The pitch. Swing. And that ball's lifted high into right field, but not very deep. Cunha comes in, makes the catch with his red and yellow glove. And there's one away. One down, Max Freed at 58 pitches. If he can get this under control, he might be able to get into the fifth inning. Perfect scenario would be him to eat, eat sixth. The first pitch on the way is a curve ball. Just clips the inner part of the zone. It's 0-1. Gabby Moreno 0 for 1. Fielder's choice in the first. The 0-1 pitch just below the knees. 1-1. One one. So he we went sweeper changeup. Standing on deck is McCarthy. In the hole is Blaze Alexander, the young rookie. The 1-1. One, one. High and out of the zone. Four-seam fastball. Two and one. Holy cow, Purdue. They're heading to the national title game. They're up by 20. So a 2-1 count. Freed comes set. Kicks and deals. Slaps it back up against the screen. You got a 2 2 count. The pitch from Freed. Curveball swung on, hammered into left field. That's going to get down for a base hit. The Arizona Diamondbacks have one on, one out. That was a hanging curveball, and he just got over the top of it and sent it just in between Austin Riley and Orlando Arcee, a hard-hit ball, one hopper through the infield. That'll bring Corbin Carroll to the plate. Carroll takes a swing at the first pitch, hits it over to Ozzie. Ozzie on his horse, grabs it, flips it. It's a 4-3 put out, two away on the play. Moreno goes into scoring position and grabs second base. Real quick on the MLB scoreboard, games that are currently going on. Houston over Texas 2-1. to one. That game's in the third. Yankees all over Toronto. And I believe Gaussman was on the hill tonight. 6-0 in the second. So Gaussman having a Max Freed type of a day. White Sox and Royals scoreless in the fifth. Seattle, Minnesota 3-0. Mariners bottom of the fourth. They lead. Tampa and Colorado, San Diego, San Fran, Boston, L.A. They all play later on tonight. The 1-0 pitch to Alexander is a swing and a miss strike. Curveball over the edge. It's 1-1. One one. The 
The one one. Right there for a strike. One and two. So a one two count. Free comes set, kicks and fires. Swing and rifles that foul down the right field line. The one, two. The pitch. Nowhere near the zone up high, two and two. So a two, two count. The pitch. Max Freed comes set. Kicks and fires. Caught looking strike three. Curveball up top. Just nicked the top of the zone. That'll end the inning. Max gets out of it. We come back. Darno, Kelnick, and Ronald Acuna Jr. coming to the plate. There's the chirping again. How are you not hearing that? News flash. I've been hearing it the entire damn time. Then why would you say something? Because I hate you. Today we're going to go over some wild baseball coincidences that you won't believe are true. Minnesota's Metrodome hosted eight World Series games in its history. In all eight of those games, Terry Pendleton's team lost. The Cardinals lost four in the 1987 World Series, and the Braves lost four in the 1991 World Series. Lou Gehrig, the Iron Horse, had his first career home run on September 27, 1923. His last home run would come exactly 15 years later on September 27, 1938. Warren Spawn had a longer streak of hitting at least one home run that he did pitch at least one shutout. He had homers in 17 consecutive seasons, but only had shutouts in 15 consecutive seasons. There have only been two pitchers in Major League Baseball history with the name Moyer. Ed Moyer, who pitched six games for the Senators, who died on November 18, 1962, and Jamie Moyer, who pitched 25 years in the Majors and was born on that same day, November 18, 1962. Dennis Eckersley picked off Kenny Williams on June 29, 1987. His next pickoff would occur almost four years later when he picked off, you guessed it, Kenny Williams again. On April 20th, 1912, two months before the cornerstone was laid for Ebbets Field, Fenway Park opened its doors for the first time. The Red Sox beat the New York Highlanders that afternoon, 7-6 to six in 11 innings, beginning one of the most intense rivalries in baseball. And then they went on to win the pennant and the series, setting a precedent that did not last for long. Chris Speaker once owned its center field. Smokey Joe Wood and Babe Ruth and Roger Clemens have all bewildered batters there. Ted Williams, who sharpened his eye by shooting the pigeons that flew over the outfield, hit so many home runs into the right field bullpen that players came to call it Williamsburg. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Travis... Darnode comes to the plate. He'll take the first swing and hits that wall hard. A one hopper backhanded to Cattell Marte. He makes a bad throw, but Christian Walker able to scoop it up. It's one away. 4 3 put out if you're scoring at home. That was a hard shot. One hopper. Marte did a great job of scooping that out and then almost threw it away. So that'll bring Jared Kelnick to the plate. J.K. off to a really good start here with the Braves. 583 and a 1393 OPS. He continues that up. We're not going to need pitching to win the World Series. The 1-0 pitch. Just grabs his own outer edge. 1-1. One one. Righty lefty. Fought kicks and deals. Swing and that ball's lifted into left field. That's gonna get down for a base hit. The JK kid is on, and the Braves got something cooking. One on, one out. And the top of the lineup. That means that man's coming up. Ronald Acuna Jr. new 
clips for Acuna and Ozzy when they go yard. We haven't been able to use him yet. The first pitch on the way to Acuna clips the zone on the outer edge. Look like the sweeper. It's on one. Acuna didn't like it, but that did look like a strike. It was a good frame by Moreno, but it looked like it grabbed the zone going by the 0-1 pitch. Swing, and the ball is fired down to first base, trying to keep, trying to catch Jared Kelnick sleeping. He was back before the tag, 0-2. That's obviously not considered a move to first. That rule is still in play. Two moves to first, and then after that, you have to pick them off or it's a balk. The 0-2 pitch inside, one and two. So a one-two count. Kelnick getting a decent lead. Anything that gets down in the gap, he should score. The one-two, down and away. Good take by Acuna. Two and two. Tried to grab that sweeper, the same pitch that he got called for a strike on the first pitch of the at bat. This one was a little lower, a little outside if you're listening on radio. If you're listening on YouTube, Braves Country Radio on YouTube, please hit that like button. The 2 2 pitch. Caught looking strike three. Couldn't get the bat off his shoulders. Acuna knew it. Two away. Man, that's a pitch you wish he had back. They were trying to set him up inside to jam him, and that ball was about just over the knees and right over the plate. And he's really hitting well. Acuna golfs that into center field. First pitch on the way to Ozzie Albee. Swung on, bounced off the glove of Christian Walker. He's going to, he drops it, flips it, and the ball is bobbled by Fott. So we'll see how they score, but we've got runners on first and second with two outs. I'd say that's probably an error. E3 is what I would guess. That'll bring Austin Riley to the plate. Austin Riley with a chance to get the Braves back in this one. The first pitch to Austin. The swing and pops it up. Can of corn. He bit on the slider on the outer edge, and that'll be a F4 in your scorecard. Braves put two on but fail to score. We'll head to the fourth. Top of the order due up. For the snakes. It is a haunted game in which every player is measured against the ghosts of all who have gone before. Most of all, it is about time and timelessness, speed and grace, failure and loss, imperishable hope and coming home. Here's a pitch, it's a slow curve law, and the babe swings. It's a long one. It's in there. Another home run for the Bambino. So the babe hits his second home run. Hey Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you... Join the Country Club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one-of-a-kind emojis, to display your Braves pride throughout the ball game. You also get instant access to our video drops, members only chat, wallpapers, and more is on the way. Help support Braves Country Radio. Join the Country Club today. Get this bus moving. Stop. Come back. Too late. Roll call! Yeah, yeah, roll call! You're in Braves country. Time for roll call. We got a little sidetracked with the, all the runs we gave up in the first. Well, let's go ahead and get into roll call. Good evening, Nathaniel. Good evening. 
Good evening, Marguerite. It's like Jillian. I don't have my glasses, so I apologize if I mispronounce anything. Uh, Mr. Woodrow, Robert. Adventure Time, Grady, the first pitch on the way from Max Freed is a swing and a miss strike. It's 0-1. Where did I leave off that? Shannon, the 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss over the top. It's 0-2. He's going slider sweeper to start the at-bat. I think I said Shannon. Good evening, Shannon. Good evening, Eric. The 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Got him chasing that curveball. One away. Good evening to Herman. Cody. Danielson. Willis. Brian. X803. J-Rod. Nancy. Kellal. Kellal, excuse me. First pitch on the way from... Max Freed to Corbin Carroll misses up top for a ball. It's 1-0. Good evening to, I think I said J-Rod, Nancy, Kalel, Jillian, Ashley. The 1-0 pitch, down and away, 2-0. Nancy, Cody, WCG, Edward. Hey, Edward, I haven't seen you in a, in a minute. The 2-0 pitch. 93 mile an hour fastball just grabs the inside black. It's two and one. See if I've missed anybody. I'm trying to scroll and call the game at the same time gets a little tricky. The two one pitch slice foul down the third base line. It's two and two. Cherry. Good evening. Racing nine. Leaf. If I'm butchering these names, we do apologize. And good evening, Daniel. I think I'm caught up in David S. The two two pitch misses down and away. Three and two. So a three two count. Hey, goat's back. Good to get off work, ain't it, goat? We missed you last night, I believe. I don't I don't recall seeing you last night. So a full count. That's what's wrong with the pitching staff. Goat hasn't been in here. The 3-2 pitch. Freed kicks and fires. Swung on. Grounded up the middle. Right to Arcia. He'll flip it over to first. Carroll's busting it down the line, but it's a 6-3 put out. Two away. Two of the prettiest things of just normal stuff you'll see in baseball. Corbin Carroll flying down the line and Orlando Arcia unleashing his arm. Like Those are two of the best things that you'll see in today's baseball game. A routine 6 3 put out is not a boring thing when those two things are on display. If you're missing, if, uh, if you missed it, Purdue held on to beat NC State 63 to 50. They're heading to the title game. First pitch on the way to Lourdes Goriel. Good Lord, did he give that a ride? It's going to be fouled left of the foul pole. He gave it, it had enough distance, it just didn't stay straight. It amazes me that more suitors didn't come after Guriel in the offseason. First pitch on the way to Guriel is a swing and a fouled straight back. Looked like he went with the sweeper after the changeup. It's 0 and 2. So an 0 2 count for Max. You'd love to see him eat some more innings. 81 pitches on the night. The pitch. Chop foul back behind home play. In on his hands. We'll do it again. It's 0-2. If you're just joining us, everything happened in the first inning. Max Freed, do you drop Strider in your fantasy league? Go, do you drop Max Freed in your fantasy league? That's the real question. God bless. He's just getting tore up. Uh, I would wait until we find out the exact nature of it looks like he's heading towards, as the 0-2 pitch is down and away, 1-2. and two. It looks like he's heading towards Tommy John, but they haven't said that. So I, we'll probably know in the next few days. They're probably going to get it looked at once again to see if there's any way for him to pitch after shutting it down and coming back. So I wouldn't drop him just yet. If you got an IL spot, I would 
hold on to him. The one two pitch down and away two and two. But obviously, if the news comes back, you know, that that's the third big gun that's already been lost in Major League Baseball. Y'all might have missed it with the Max Fried stuff, but Shane Bieber, who's a free agent at the end of the year, he is heading for Tommy John surgery. And Yuri Perez, excellent young pitcher for the Miami Marlins, he gone. He has He's getting Tommy John. The one two two pitch swung on, chopped hard over to first, but a nice play by Matt Olson. He'll step on the pillow, and that'll end the inning. Three up, three down. Max Fried starting to roll. Will head to the bottom of the fourth. The Braves got to start scratching some runs out. House cat flu is coming, people. The Center for Disease Disinformation predicts with some degree of probability that the house cat flu might spread in the following hypothetical outbreak pattern. Mild thirst, occasional hunger, tiredness at night. Brand new for the Braves Country Radio broadcast season. Along with pitch by pitch, play by play, the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. We will bring you a live pregame show and postgame show. The phone lines wide open for you to call, react, or ask your questions along with the chat. That's Braves Country today pregame, Braves Country tonight postgame. Are you pro or con against the uh, bat flip? Just overall celebration. I'm, I'm right there in the middle. I'm not going to take either side. I, you know, I'm, I'm more against it, I guess, but uh, if a pitcher is going to be out there dancing and running his mouth and you get a home run off him, I'm completely okay with a bat flip. You know, like, uh, screw you, buddy. Um, well, I, for one, want to get a Papelbon jersey because <laughs> anyone that chokes out <laughs> – Chokes out Bryce Harper, man. Right? <laughs> I, I am Team Papplebomb. <laughs> Armchair. I hear these fools on TV talking about defund the police and things like that. We need police reform and prison reform and things like that. So that notion they keep saying that, I'm like, wait a minute. We just going to leave. Who, who are people supposed to call? Ghostbusters? When we have crime in our neighborhoods? The local paper did a 50-year anniversary thing, and there was a reprint of a game that he had played in in 1892, and it said Watts. His name was Fred Watts, shortstop, and he had two hits. And I thought my grandfather played baseball in 1892. So it's part of existence. It's part of our heritage. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. First pitch on the way to Matt Olson is swung on and fouled back out of play. It's 0-1. Diamondback 6, Braves nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning. The 0-1 pitch. High and out of the zone. 1-1. One one. Braves have had a little bit of traffic on the base paths. One hit. So far against Fott, their first time seeing the young right-hander. The 1-1 misses outside changeup. Nowhere near the zone, two and one. So a two one count. The pitch. Swing, and that ball's rifled into left field. That is going to get down for a base hit, and that is going to be a double. Looked like it hopped over the wall, and Matt Olson kind of disappeared from the camera work. It hopped just, I mean, just hit. It didn't actually hit the chalk. Bounced up against the wall and then hopped over. Doesn't really matter. You, you can tell the the uh, disgust by Guriel who was chasing it, but that was going to be a double regardless. So that'll bring Ozuna to the plate. Ozuna takes a swing at the first pitch. Swing and a miss. Sweeper. It's 0-1. Marcelo Zuna 0 for 1 with the line out in the second. Hard hit ball, just wrong place, wrong time. The 0 1. Swing and a miss. Chase that sweeper again. 0 and 2. So an 0 2 count. The big bear will step out of the box, take his time out. 9 15 OPS on the air, three home runs, six RBI. We'd just take a good old fashioned bleeder to get Olsen home once you get that 
the floodgates open on the scoring, they usually come. The 0-2 pitch. Swing! And that ball is rifled down the right field line. That ball is fair. It's going to get down for a base hit. One run will score. Olsen coming across the plate. Here comes Big Zoo sliding in the second. And your Atlanta Braves cut it to 6-1. Let's go. Good piece of hitting by Ozuna. Tried to sneak the heat on the outside. And the cheese got too much part of the plate. He slaps it into right field. Another ball that just got fair, just inside the chalk. Good hustle by Ozuna turns it into a double. So an RBI double for Ozuna. Michael Harris, the second coming through. The second time through the lineup for the Braves. First time seeing Brandon Fott in their career. First pitch on the way is down and in changeup. It's 1-0. and Braves one, snake six, bottom of the fourth, nobody out. Runner on second. Harris at the plate. Arcia stands on deck, the 1 0 pitch. Swung on, hits it high and deep down the left field line. Plenty foul and out of play. Evens up the count, it's 1 and 1. Two changeups to start the at bat. That one didn't quite drop down far enough. Fott will throw that sweeper. He'll, he's got the fastball, the changeup. He's got the sinker. He'll use them all, the 1-1. One, one. Swing, and that ball's hit hard down the right field line. Off the glove of Walker, and he he's going to go into the corner. Here comes Ozuna. He will score. It's 6-2, to two. and Michael Harris, the second. The Hawk grabs third base. An RBI triple, and here comes your Atlanta Braves. It ain't over till it's over. Hard hit ball. Tried to get that sweeper. Think he was trying to grab the outer edge, and it got about midway through on the plate. Low ball, but scorched past the glove of Christian Walker. Michael Harris's first triple of the season. They're going to have a quick powwow out there on the mound. Infielders coming in. Along with Brent Strom, the pitching coach of the Arizona Diamondbacks. So runner on third, nobody out. A fly ball would cut this lead in half of what it once was. 6-2 your score. Truist Park is waking up. The first pitch, swing and a miss. Chase that sweeper well off the plate. It's 0-1. Orlando Arcia batting 440 on the year. 1121 OPS. The 0 1 pitch. Sweeper tried to get him to chase. They're going to check down the line. Didn't look like he went. He did not. It's 1 and 1. First base umpire, Adam Homari, who will be tomorrow's home plate umpire, said no dice. So a 1 1 count. Harris on third. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Another sweeper. One and two. The way Arcia opens up his swing and tries to pull most balls, that sweeper he's just never going to make contact with. He's going to have to change that approach at this at bat or it's going to be a whiff. Just got to get some kind of contact. They'll give that run up to stop the bleeding. The, the one-two pitch, swing and a miss once again. Nowhere near that pitch. The ball gets away. Moreno's going to flip it down to first. That was an easy strikeout for Fott. One down. Lando Arce, sometimes he just gets it in his head that he is going to swing, and he will not <laughs> be talked out of it.
First pitch on the way to Travis Darnot is inside for a swing and a miss strike. It's 0-1. The 0-1. Righty, righty. Just off the plate wide. One and one. Yeah, if you're in a dynasty league, I mean, I'm obviously going to keep them on, on my IL. But we have a pretty deep IL. It's a true dynasty. The 1-1 one, one pitch, down and away, 2-1. But I've got another league. There's just no way you can keep Strider because <laughs> I've already got enough guys taking up spots on the aisle. I can't put him there. The 2-1 pitch. Kicks and fires. Swing and fouls it back. We'll do it again. So a 2-1 count. Or 2-2 count, excuse me. Runner on third. Just need to get Harris home to cut this to six. You get it six to three heading to the fifth. You'll be doing all right. The two, two fought come set the pitch swing and a minute. No. Yep. Swing and a miss strike three. Look like he missed it. And then the way Darno stared at it down the line. I thought maybe he actually got a hold of it, but so two strikeouts after fought. Had the little powwow with his pitching coach. And now two outs, it's up to Kelnick. The first pitch to Kelnick, swing and a miss over the top of the sweeper. 0 oh, 1. Really hate losing. You know, you get Harris on that third base line, on third base with no outs. You got to find a way to get him home. It's a bad job by Darnode and Arcia. The 0 oh, 1. Swing and a miss. Up top, it's 0-2. So we went sweeper, then fastball. I'd say we'll find out sometime early next week on Spencer Strider. But it doesn't look good. It, it looks like Tommy John. The 0-2 pitch. Up high, good take by Kelnick, 93-mile-an-hour fastball. It was over the dish, but a little high, just above the letters, one and two. So a one-two count. Righty, lefty. Kelnick stands, caught looking, strike three. Got to get your bat, got to get the bat off your shoulders, kid. He'll head to the bench. Hey, grab his glove, but the Braves score two and cut it to six to two. We'll be back in a flash. This is Lou Brissy. And the fact that most of you don't know who he is is a travesty. Before he could fulfill his childhood dream and play in the major leagues, World War II happened. And by 1944, he was serving as a squad leader in G Company, 351st Infantry Regiment, 88th Infantry Division. On December 7th, 1944, the place he was stationed near Florence, Italy, was attacked by an artillery barrage. Eight men went down. 20-year-old Captain Lou Brissy was one of them. An artillery shell had broken both of his feet and shattered his left tibia and shin bone in 30 places. Shrapnel was also stuck in his shoulder, both hands, and both thighs. Barely conscious, he laid there in the snow and mud until medics arrived. The medics first thought was to amputate, but Lou wouldn't have it. Amputating his leg would end any chance he would have of playing baseball for the athletic. Doctors would persist, saying that he could pass away, but his mind never wavered, and he told them that he would take his chances. Fast forward two years. Lou has now gone through 23 surgeries and had 40 blood transfusions. His leg is reconstructed with hard wire, and it has a metal plate protector. During this time, Connie Mack, manager of the athletics, would write him, reminding him that healing was his main priority. Once he was healed, Mack assured him he would get a tryout with the team. The athletics would sign him and send him to play for the Savannah Indians, where he would lead the league in wins, strikeouts, and earn run average. Eventually, he would be called up, and his dream of playing professional baseball would come true. Bob Feller said that without World War II, Lou Brissy would have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Now you know the story of Lou Brissy. Do me a favor and share it with someone who you know loves baseball and doesn't know the story. At a meeting in New York City, Ward helped found the Brotherhood of Professional Baseball Players. It was the players' first attempt to organize, and they were determined to abolish the hated reserve clause. But Albert Goodwill Spalding and the other 
other owners would not give an inch. In 1889, they tried further to consolidate their power by setting an absolute salary cap of $2,500, then added insult to injury by charging the players rent for their uniforms. It was the last straw. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. The Atlanta Braves trail 6-2. to two. Max Free goes back to work, misses the first pitch inside to Christian Walker. It's 1-0. Oh. The 1-0, oh, lefty-righty, swing and a chopper back to the mound. This time, Freed's got it, flips it, and it's a 1-3 put out. Good start to the top of the fifth inning. Yes, Robert, the Braves play a four-game series at home in Atlanta versus the Mets. That starts Monday, 721st pitch for all. The first three games of the series, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday is a day game. 12-21st pitch. We'll have them all right here. And then we head to Miami to take on the Marlins. Three-game set that starts next weekend. Curveball on the way from Freed is called for a strike on the outer edge to Suarez. It's 0-1. The 0-1. Pitch on the way, down below the knees, one and one. Go miss the Reds podcast. We were talking about it today. The uh, Reds Country Radio podcast that I do with one of our Reds fans, Doug, is the one one pitch swung on, hit hard on the ground in between third and short, and it's a one out single by Suarez. He is really off to a good start here in 2024. And I can't remember the exact number now. But the Mets have already been outscored. I, I'm trying to remember. Twen, it was 24, 26 runs, something like that. I'll, I'll have to look it up in a second. First pitch on the way to Grandel Kritchik. It swung on and slapped into the hole into right field. And they've got runners on first and second again, one out. So Max Fried, who had been cruising along, but he had very little traffic on the base pads the last few innings, now finds himself in another jam. Do got action warming up in the Braves' bullpen. Dylan Lee back at it. First pitch on the way from Freed, 86 miles an hour. Misses high and out of the zone. It's 1-0. They would have loved to get at least through the fifth here with Max, but starting to run out of gas. The 1-0. The pitch. Curve ball right there, 1-1. One one. So a 1-1 one, one count. Free comes set, the pitch. Off the plate wide, change up misses, two and one. Two, one. Swing and fouls it back, two and two. Oh, I've got them separate. I, I I had them mixed up. I was thinking of the Marlins. But the Mets are 15-run uh, differential. The Marlins lost again. They're 0-9, and, and their run differential, we'll see them next week, 32. They've been outscored by 32 runs. The 2-2, two -two, swung on and fouled back. We'll do it again at 2-2. Two and two. Can you believe that 32? Oakland's been outscored by 26. The White Sox, 21. And the Colorado Rockies, 31. The 2-2 two -two from Freed. Swung on, come back to the mound. Freed has it, and he throws it into center field, and that's going to be a run at 7-2. Another bad defensive play by Max Freed. Terrible throw. Ozzy Albies was covering the bag, and he threw it to his left as Ozzy was heading towards his right. Could have got him out of the inning. Would have been a double play most likely. Bad throw 
And it looks like that is going to bring Snicker out. And I would think that means that that is the end for Max Freed. Mad Max has turned into Sad Max. We'll be back in a flash here on Braves Country. Hey, quick question. Um, and I feel stupid for asking, but when you're stirring up some do you go clockwise or counterclockwise? Today we are discussing the career of George Brett. He is most known for the pine tar game that occurred on July 24th, 1983. He twice collected four hits in a postseason game. Even more impressive, he batted 370 in the World Series against the St. Louis Cardinals. This included his Game 7 4 for 5 performance. Overall, in the postseason, he batted 337 with a 1.023 OPS in 43 games. In 1980, he nearly became the first player to hit 400 since Ted Williams in 1941. On September 19th, with 13 games left, he went 2 for 4, raising his average to exactly 400. He won the American League MVP award in 1980. He finished with a 300 or better average in 11 of his 21 seasons. Over his 21-year career, he batted 305 with 317 home runs and 1,596 RBI. He had 3,154 hits and had a career war of 88.6. He was a 13-time All-Star, won one gold glove, and won six silver sluggers. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1999 with 98.2% of the vote. It certainly was a kind of have and have not thing. The baseball players were very expendable. If you got hurt, you were gone. There was no pension or anything else like that. And uh, they saw people making money hand over fist. Um, the owners, in, the, in Comiskey's sake, uh, case, he owned the ballpark. He bottled his own soda in the basement. You know, he was making a nickel on everything that went, you know, that, that moved in that ballpark. And there they were, you know, they were nicknamed the Black Sox even before they threw the World Series because uh, one year he started charging them for laundering their uniforms. And they went on strike by saying, OK, then we won't launder them. And they got dirtier and dirtier and dirtier until the sports writers called them the Black Sox. And then, in fact, Comiskey said, OK, I'll launder your uniforms. And then he took it out of their World Series bonus. <laughs> Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. First pitch on the way from Dylan Lee, who's in for Max Freed. Swung on and fouled down the first baseline. It's on one. Braves hanging in here, 7-2. to two. Max Freed, another bad outing. The one pitch, just below the knees, one and one. Dylan Lee might be asked to throw a couple innings here, try to bridge their way through this game. The 1-1, one, one, swung on, that ball is belted down towards the right field. It's going to drop in front of Acuna. It'll get down for a base hit, an RBI double, and it's 8-2 to two Arizona. Runners on second and third. McCarthy just kind of hooked it. Looked like it was going to... Go a little further than it did. Had a lot of top spin, just dropped out of the sky. It looked like it was heading towards the corner. Cunha cut it off. No chance of getting the runner coming around, so he threw it into the infield. Runners on second and third, one out. Top of the fifth inning. The pitch. Right there for a strike. Top of the zone to Alexander. It's on one. That run will be credited to Max Freed. The 0 1 pitch swung on and fouled back. It's 0 and 2. Right now they have him credited for eight earned runs. I don't know how accurate that is. That might get changed because. Though it was his error, that was an error that kept the inning going. The 0-2, inside, 1-2. and two. You can't assume a double play. It depends on how this inning plays out. That It, it may get down to six or seven earned runs. So a 1-2 count. He's still responsible for the guy on third. The pitch swung on, pops it up. High in the sky, running in is... Michael Harris, the second, the Hawk has it, and he will run into the infield, make sure nobody advances to away. He had a long way to go. The infield was in, and Harris, his momentum just carried him into the infield. So a 
long way to go. But 75% of the world is water. The rest is covered by Michael Harris II. Dylan Lee will now face Corbin Carroll. They automatically walked Cattell Marte, and rightfully so. That guy's been pounding the Braves, not to mention the fact lefty-lefty to get Carroll in. Not that Carroll's a desirable bat to face, but you got to pick your poison the first pitch. 83 mile an hour slider right there for a strike. It's 0 1. The 0 1. Swing! Pops it up high in the sky. Who wants it? Who gets it? It'll be Ronald Acuna Jr., and that'll end the inning. But not before. Diamondbacks get the two runs back that they gave up. It's eight to two. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Get those bats warm, Braves. Anybody else just kind of feel like their check engine light is on and you're just like, nah, this is fine. The amount of people who stand in the absolute middle of the aisle in the grocery store. What are you doing? Pick a side. I hate you. Hey, Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free, and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Somebody just came up to me and asked me what I do for a living. I said, mind my damn business. They hiring a two. You want me to get you an application? Cincinnati took the fourth game two to nothing behind the superb pitching of Jimmy Ring. Eddie Sacati had pitched well for the Sox, but once again, he made several devastating errors in the field. There is no alibi for Sacati. He pitched a great game, a determined game, and one that would have won nine times out of ten. But he brought the defeat crashing down upon his own head by trying to do all the defensive work. He made the wild throw that gave the Reds their opening, the only real one they had. And he followed that up by grabbing a ball thrown from the outfield and deflecting it past the catcher. A high fly to left, blown by the wind over the head of Jackson, who was playing close in, followed, and Chicago was beaten. Three White Sox, Felsch, Gandal, and Shoeless Joe, all of them conspirators, had managed hits that afternoon. Only at bat did Jackson evidently forget the script. He would bat 375 in the series. Welcome back to Braves Country Radio. Trying to get the Braves back in it. He is 0 for 2. He'll face Brandon Fott, who had a little bit of a long delay sitting there on the bench this last half inning. See if it affects him. First pitch from Fott is a swing, and that ball is rifled towards right field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Ronald Acuna Jr. has got himself a base hit, and the Atlanta Braves got something cooking here. McCarthy laid out kind of foolishly, to be honest with you, because an 8 2 lead. I think his manager would probably tell him. Just let that ball fall. Don't let it get behind you. That ball gets behind him. That's at least two, if not four bases. Ozzie Albies comes to the plate. Ozzie Albies digs in the first pitch, swing and fouls it straight back. It's on one. Fought came with the fastball that time. The 0 1. Open stance. Ozzie. Swing and a miss. 91 miles an hour. Blew it right by him up top. It's 0 and 2. So an 0-2 count, Acuna stands on first. You do wonder if he may be going down six. That used to be a thing people paid attention to. They'll run it any time nowadays. Fought thinking the same thing, turns around and fires it over to first. 0-2. 
I was never so disappointed in someone's last name when I actually heard it pronounced when Brandon Fott came up because I really wanted it to be fat. I was like, come on, fat daddy. Throw that ball. The 0-2 pitch turned around and flips it over there again. We'll do it again. He ended up on one of my dynasty teams because I was like, this is this name's too good to be true. Picked him up early last year. So an 0-2 count. Acuna. Swing and a miss. Ozzy Albies blew it right by him. Four-seam fastball. He's just not picking that pitch up for whatever reason. One away. He They just piped it right down the throat. Bang, bang, bang. Strikeout for Brandon Fott. Austin Riley will dig in. First pitch to Riley is swung on and fouled straight back. It's 0-1. Last time up, Riley had a chance to drive some runs and swung at the first pitch. It was a slider outside and popped it up. And that was the same pitch that Fott tried to throw there. He just didn't have it the same placement. The 0-1 pitch. Misses high, I guess. 1-1. One one. Looked like a strike, but... No dice. So a 1-1 one, one count. Righty, righty, the pitch. Swing and fouls it back. One and two. Runner on first. And Ronald Acuna Jr. Austin Riley standing at the plate. Fought flips it back over to first to keep Acuna at bay. The one two. Fought lifts his leg, goes. Swing, and that ball's ripped down the left field line. That's going to get down for a base hit. Ronald Cunha Jr. is motoring around from first to third. Think he'll they'll hold him up. They will, but your Atlanta Braves have runners on second and third and one out here. In the bottom of the fifth. Ball was hit hard down the third baseline, but a good job by Gurriel. He played the carom perfect. That'll bring Matt Olson to the plate. Matt Olson stands in the first pitch, 92 mile an hour fastball, misses high, but called for a strike. It's 0 1. Mark Rippinger, the home plate umpire, he can't decide if that pitch is a strike or a ball. He's gone back and forth on that location all night long. The 0-1 pitch. Inside, Olsen had to duck out of the way. It's 1-1. One and one. So a 1-1 one, one count. Olsen with a walk, a double, a run scored. He's 1-1. One for one. One swing could cut this to a four or even three run lead. The one, one pitch chase that one outside one and two. Hate to see him offer that. That pitch was nowhere near the zone. I think it's one of those ones where he started swinging mentally couldn't shut it down. So a one, two count the infield is back. Acuna, man, he's got a huge lead. The one-two pitch, swing, pops it up, jammed him, and that'll be an easy out. Can of corn over by first. Catch is made, two away. Olsen cursing himself for swinging at that. So, Marcelo Zun will be asked to come through with the base hit. Another blown opportunity by the Braves. Think about that run that was left out there by Harris. 
First pitch on the way to Azuna. Swung on, and that ball is belted deep into left field. Is it far enough? It is gone, baby! ram a lam -a ding dong zip boom bam and your Atlanta Braves! The fourth home run of the year for the big zoo! 401 happy feet, 107 miles an hour off the bat. And it's eight to five, hot Atlanta GA. Here they come. A hanger, a banger. He smacked that over the track. Four home runs already for Marcelo Zuna. It barely got over the wall. And it was such a skyscraper, you couldn't tell if if it was just if it was gonna get there. The first pitch on the way to Michael Harris the second. He's outside for a ball, it's one and oh. I mean they're saying four oh one. I doubt that, but the one oh pitch right there for a strike. One and one. It barely got over the left field wall. The folks in the very first section actually dropped the ball, almost dropped it back into play. The one one to Michael swung on and swatted foul and out of play. It's one and two. Well, the Braves got over that four and a half. It was one of our locks today over four and a half runs. So a one two count. Righty, lefty, the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Harris down on strikes. But not before your Atlanta Braves strike. They score three runs. It's eight to five. We got ourselves a ball game. Get you a cold one and grab an armchair. I'm your Uber driver. Get in. I didn't order an Uber. We've got one now. I'm good, bro. Oh, my God. Get in. Or wait, wait, wait. All right, guess what, guys? We made a football team. We're calling it the Buffalo Bills. Oh, that is very cool. What's our mascot going to be? Who, Bill? Who's Bill? No, the mascot's a Buffalo. But, but you said we're the Bills. Yeah, the logo is Buffalo. Right, and we're in Buffalo. But we're the Bills, you said. Right. Well, why don't we just be the Buffaloes? Well, then we'd be the Buffalo Buffaloes. Yeah. Ah, uh, it's a little too much Buffalo. Okay. We're the Thanks. Buffalo Bills, okay? We're named after Buffalo Bill Cody. He's a legendary bison hunter. Wait, so we're naming our mascot after a guy that used to kill our mascot? Technically, yes. Maybe there's a guy that kills dolphins. That, that makes more sense. That's illegal. He's Bill. What if we call him Billy? You know, it's a little more kid friendly. Okay, sure. Okay, how about full name William Buffalo, but he goes by Bill socially. 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 All right, we don't need a full backstory. But listen, it's cold up here. We're going to build a dome to play in, right? No, 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 no. We thought it through. It should be fine. <laughs> Lager, the beer that brought the forest down. I drive an exotic imported sports car. I eat exotic foreign food like frankfurters and pizza. But when it comes to numbing my mind, I'm a patriot. I drink the beer that brought the forest down. I'm a lager man. And with the new 80 bottle trunk pack, you've got enough for the evening. Hey, it's happy hour somewhere. Lager brings out the patriot in you. Companies of every kind promoted baseball for their workers. Management believed it encouraged teamwork, provided a healthy way to fill spare time that might otherwise be devoted to labor agitation, and taught immigrant workers how to be real Americans. Nearly every industry had a league. Railroads, steel, electricity, coal and iron, textiles, meat packing, automobiles and thousands of workers came out for factory games on the weekends. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. First pitch on the way from Dylan Lee, who goes back to work as a changeup. Strike on the outer edge, it's 0-1. Arizona 8, Braves 5. That's the bad news. The good news is we were down 6 nothing at one point. Max Fried with another bad outing. The 0-1 pitch. Lee kicks and deals. Swing, and that ball's rifled into the center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. And Arizona has a leadoff single. Start the sixth. So that'll bring Christian Walker to the plate. 
the cleanup hitter. He's already got three home runs on the year, one for three, RBI. First pitch to Walker, fades outside for a ball. It's 1-0. The 1 0. Kicks and fires. Swing! And that ball's lifted high into center field, going back just before the warning track. Michael the Hawk Harris makes the catch, and there's one away. He hit that ball on the screws, but right at Harris. This Arizona team, they're going to be a fun bunch to watch all year and we may very well see them in October much like the Braves and a couple other teams in this game where their their lineup just keeps coming at you the first pitch on the way Suarez is a swing and a miss strike it's 0-1 by Monday on the pregame show we'll uh we'll go over realistic Zero one pitch, swing and a miss over the top. 0 oh and two. We'll go over realistic trade targets the Braves could go after to fill the role of Spencer Strider. I was looking at it a little bit today, but I don't think I'll hit that up until I have a chance to kind of whittle it down. The O two pitch swung on and hammered down the left field line. Is it fair? Just and I mean just foul. That was trouble. Eugenio Suarez, once again, I don't know why they throw to this guy. I mean, this guy just absolutely smokes everything. Him and Cattell Marte. I think it'd be easier just to plunk him on the on the wallet and send him down to first. So an 0-2 count. Runner on first. One out. The pitch, outside wide, one and two. Arizona, eight, Atlanta, five, top of the sixth inning. Braves still with four more at bats. The one, two, swung on, ripped over to short. RC has got it, turns around, flips it over to second. It's going to be a six, four, Three, almost inning-ending double play. Good hustle down the line by Suarez will be a fielder's choice, two down. That ball, hard hit. Arcia had to backhand it, spin, fire it over to second, and think the throw might have been just a tad off, and it threw Ozzy's momentum off, or he might have had a chance to turn that. First pitch on the way to Randall Gritchick is two for three. First three at bats of the season. Down and in for a ball, it's one and oh. He was a late signing, if you remember. So he's essentially going to platoon with Jock Peterson at the DH position for Arizona this year. The one oh swung on, chopped over to third. Riley's got it, flips it over to second. He'll take the easy way. And it is a 5-4 put out to end the inning. Ozzy didn't like the fact that Suarez ran right through. I guess he might have came close to clipping his foot. We'll take a look at it when we come back. People would be like, damn, you're just so chill. I'm like, thanks, I gave up. <laughs> Lastly, before I open the bar in the morning, I always make sure to turn on the Coors sign, let people know we got ice delicious Coors in the bar, you know, and then uh, that's the last thing I do. That sign does not say Coors. Eh? Come outside, come outside, come outside. Closed. It says closed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right, I can see that now. But, you know, you can't really read it from the inside. So... You can't read it from the outside. All right. Today we're going to talk about crazy stats. Both Cecil and Prince Fielder ended their careers with 319 home runs. They both made their major league debuts at the age of 21. They both had one season with 50 or more home runs, one season with 40 or more home runs, and four seasons with 30 or more home runs. Exactly 40% of their hits went for extra base hits, and 22% of the balls they put into play were line drives. And that's not all. 
They also matched each other with 97 two-out home runs, 49 fourth-inning home runs, 29 fifth-inning home runs, and 18 ninth-inning home runs. Players like Waddell, with their drinking, with their bad acting, with their inability to take their profession seriously. They came to baseball in its early years in very large numbers because baseball, though popular, was outside social norms. The instability of a career where you might work for a year or two and then be gone, the jumping from team to team seemed to be suited toward individuals who couldn't fit as well in the rest of society. Now, it helped in the case of Rube Waddell and many of these other sociopathic figures, that in addition to being sociopaths, they also had incredibly strong arms or very good batting eyes. You're listening to Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Lando Arcia will lead us off seven, eight, nine batters. First pitch on the way drifts in for a ball from Brandon Fott, who's back out there. It's one and zero. Fott's given up five runs through five innings. The one zero pitch, outside wide, one and one. He never did close the book on Max Fried. He went four and a third, and they did change it to seven earned runs. The 1-1 one, one swing, and that ball's rifled down the right field line past the first base, but foul. That was close, 1-2. and two. He Finished with four and a third, seven earned runs, one walk, five strikeouts, but I think the most concerning thing is 10 hits allowed, including the home run. The 1-2. Swung on, that ball's hit over to the right side. This time, a lot slower pace. Walker will step on the bag. Unassisted put out for number th- for three. One away. You'd love to scrape away another run here, really make it tight. Remember, Arizona did not or will not most likely have access to their closer. He went he threw about 40 pitches last night, the first pitch on the way to Travis Darnode is ripped down the third base line. It's 0-1. Ginkle came in, and Braves really did a number on him. But he is their closer, so you got to figure the pitch on the way to Travis Darnode is a Baltimore chopper over the mound. Fott will grab it over his head, turn around, spin, and flip it over to first. 1-3 put out, 2 away. They do have a right-hander warming up in the Arizona bullpen. Remember, they really dumped out their bullpen last night because they were trying to cling on to that lead, the big lead that they had. Jared Keldnick comes to the plate. He takes a swing at the first pitch. It's a swing and a miss strike. It's 0-1. Dylan Lee went one and two thirds. One walk allowed. No earned runs on Lee's end. The one pitch swung on that ball is rifled into center field. That's going to get down for a base hit. Backhanded by Corbin Carroll in center field. We'll have to stop it first. Two out single. Donald Kenya Jr. will come to the plate. Eight to five, your score. I think Fott is about had it. I don't think they want Brandon Fott to see to have Ronald Kenya Jr. see him a fourth time. We'll take the break with them. The Braves got something cooking here in the bottom of the sixth inning. We'll be back in a flash here on Braves Country Radio. Hey Braves Country, this is Mac McGee with Braves Country Radio. We are bringing you pitch by pitch, play by play of your Atlanta Braves all year long. Please like and subscribe today. It's free and it helps us bring you more of the game we all love. Braves Country Radio, your home for the classic call of 
Braves Country Baseball. Hey Braves Country, I'm Mac McGee. Join us for Pitch by Pitch, Play by Play, the classic ball of Braves Country Baseball. We're bringing you Atlanta Braves baseball all year long. Jump into our pregame show, Braves Country Today, just before first pitch. Stick around for the postgame show, Braves Country Tonight, where we will open up the phone lines and react to your calls or your comments all year long. That's Braves Country Radio, pitch by pitch, play by play, your home for the classic call of Braves Country Baseball. Join the country club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one-of-a-kind emojis to display your Braves pride throughout the ball game. You'll also get instant access to our video drops, members-only chat, wallpapers, and more is on the way. Help support Braves Country Radio. Join the country club today. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Got a pitching change. Right-hander Bryce Jarvis. Come on to face Ronald Acuna Jr. First pitch to Jarvis is from Jarvis is a swing and a miss. Slider off the edge. It's 0-1. Bryce Jarvis, 26-year-old out of Lexington, Kentucky. Played his college ball at Duke and was drafted by the Diamondbacks in the first round. In the 2020 draft, the 0-1 pitch swung on and rifled foul and out of play. It's 0-2, 96 up top. If you're wondering, he is the son of Kevin Jarvis who played for the Reds and Padres in the late 90s. The 0-2 pitch swing and a miss, strike three. Acuna down on strikes, and that'll end the inning. Braves get Kelnick on, but can't get him across. We'll be back in a flash here on Braves Country. It is so hot outside, I almost called my ex so I could be around something shady. There was no such thing as on demand. You couldn't just turn on a TV and be like, I want to see this on TV demand. show. Yeah, like what you have now is on demand. Like going to... Like getting it right like immediately? Is that what you mean? That's like demand? on demand. Like demanding it right now. It's mm. ready on demand. When you open Hulu... Yeah. You go to season 12, episode 6, play. That is on demand. It is ready for you. Ready, that yeah. did not exist. Oh, okay. Right. It, yeah, it took you, like, you would just have to wait months for the next season of a TV show. Months? They would leave it on a cliffhanger and have this, the season finale, and then you would just not know anything for, like, three months. Episodes. I would just wait until everything's there to watch it then. There was no there. You had to watch it while it was on television. You can save it. You can record it with the remote. <laughs> Throughout the entire 90s, we had no ability to pause, rewind, live TV. You couldn't pause? No. Oh, that's crazy. Listen, and we had a TV guide, okay? We had a TV guide. A remote? And, what? A remote? A book. Armchair. By the 1880s, newspapers and magazines, and now baseball cards, printed up to help boost the sale of cigarettes, brought into the homes of young boys a generation of baseball heroes they would never get to see in person. Pete Browning, the old gladiator of the Louisville Eclipse, had a lifetime batting average of 343 and was the idol of Kentucky fans. One day in 1884, he broke his favorite bat. After the game, an apprentice woodworker named Bud Hillerick offered to make Browning a new bat. The next day, Browning went three for three. Thereafter, he would use no one else's bats. It was the first Louisville slugger, and Browning would eventually own more than 200 of them, to each of which he gave a name taken from the Bible. <laughs> Dylan Lee is going to go back out there for another inning. So he'll be asked to face the 7, 8, 9 batters and hopefully take us to the bottom of the seventh still with an 8-5 to five score. The first pitch on the way from Lee is a 90-mile-an-hour good pitch up top for a strike. It's 0-1. Just hit that top corner. 
the 0 1. Right there floats a slider across the plate, 0 and 2. So an 0 2 count. Lefty, righty. Dylan Lee kicks and fires. Swung on and just got a piece of that to stay alive. We'll do it again at 0 and 2. Dylan Ryan Lee is out of Danuba, California. Drafted by the Miami Marlins back in 2016. Played his college ball at Fresno State. It was a 10th round pick. The 0-2 pitch swung on and fouled back out of play. We'll do it again. Never reached the majors until he got to the Atlanta Braves organization. Has been a mainstay with Atlanta. Since that fateful night in 2021 when he appeared. The 0-2 pitch just misses outside one and two. Good pitch. Good location trying to get him to chase. Tyler Matzik, I thought we might see him tonight. He is warming up in the pen. The one, two, swung on, pops it up high in the sky. Ronald Acuna Jr. giving chase in foul territory. He'll make the catch, and there's one away. Arizona 8, Braves 5. Top of the 7th, seventh, 7th seventh inning stretch coming up. First pitch on the way is inside to McCarthy. 1-0. The 1-0. Lee comes set. Let's her go. Swing and a miss. Slider out in front. 1-1. One one. So a 1-1 one one count McCarthy, who is 2-3. for three. Right fielder at one point was one of the top prospects in all of baseball. Now is just a steady mainstay in right field for the Diamondbacks. The 1-1 one, one, swung on, chops it, just foul down the third baseline. It's 1-2. and two. The one two from Lee lets her go swung on and hits that down the left field line, but foul into the second level. Atlanta Braves will have the heart of the order due up in the bottom of the seventh. There's still a long way to go in this one. Just trailing by three exactly where we were last night. The one two pitch swung on and sliced back foul. Smacks up against the screen behind home plate. It's one and two. Tyler Matzik looks loose and warm. It's a lot. I think it'll come down to Lee won't be asked to hit the top of the lineup again. The one, two. Swung on. Hits it high. Into foul territory. Riley giving chase. He goes over the tarps just out of his reach do it again at one and two good chase by austin riley it just i mean maybe a foot past his glove he's he's fighting everything over there also trying to figure out where he's about to run out of room So a one-two count. Lee is also at 32 pitches. So this could be his last batter. The pitch. Swung on, chopper, back to the mound. Lee drops it, but regains it, flips it over to first, two away. <clears throat> I would think they would give him another chance. One more batter. Let him face Alexander and then... Go to Matzik in the eighth. 
It looks like that's what they're going to do. But if the top of the order comes up, I don't see Cattell Marte and Dylan Lee having a date with Destiny tonight. <laughs> First pitch on the way to Alexander is swinging a miss strike. It's on one. The 0 1. Lefty, righty. Alexander 0 for 3. The pitch. Swing and a mess up top. It's 0 and 2. So an 0 2 count. Nobody on two outs. Top of the seventh inning, seventh inning stretch on the way. Lee comes set. The 0 2. Swing and fouls that back 92 mile an hour. Sliders coming in in the very low 80s. Fastball, low 90s. So, about a, right about a 10 mile an hour difference. Braves have a shift on the infield to the left side, the 0 2 pitch. Swung on, hit hard on the ground. R.C. has got it. Fires it over to first, and it's a 6-3 put out to end the inning. Three up, three down. We will head to the bottom of the seventh. Get up and stretch, Braves country. to Braves Country Baseball. First pitch to Ozzy Albies right there for a strike. It's 0-1. Jarvis back to work. The 0-1 pitch down and away. 1-1. One one. Ozzy Albies 0-3 on the night. The 1-1 pitch. Jarvis lets her go. Swing and a miss. 97 miles an hour. 1-2. Ozzie had really been seeing the ball well on the road trip. He's gotten home. He's been kind of scuffling. I don't know if that long layoff the last two days messed with his timing. The one, two. Swing, and that ball's popped up high into right field. Coming in is McCarthy, making the catch, one away. One down, 
And that'll bring Austin Riley to the plate. Austin Riley, righty righty matchup. First pitch, 97 miles an hour down below the knees. It's 1 0. The 1 0. Check swing. He did go around. Thought they may give him the benefit of the doubt, but they didn't. Evens up the count, 1 and 1. So a 1 1 count. Pitch on the way. Swing. That ball's chopped over to third. Backhanded by Suarez. He'll fire it over the infield. And safe. Austin Riley beats it out. And we got runner on first. One out. Good hustle by the rake down the line. So one on, one out. Good hustle by Riley. That ball was deep in the hole for Suarez. He gave it the best shot he could. The first pitch on the way to Olsen. It's a swing and a miss strike. It's 0-1. The 0-1. Righty, lefty. Pitch on the way. Swing and fouls it back. 0-2, oh, 96 miles an hour right in his kitchen. So an 0-2 count, Olsen will take his time out. Braves trail 8-5, to these same two teams back at it tomorrow. 135 first pitch, we'll have the chat up, as always on the Sunday Funday chat day. Chris Sale on the bump, the 0-2 pitch, misses high, 1-2. One, two count. The pitch on the way in the dirt gets away to the backstop and Austin Riley will scoot on down to second. That pitch almost got Matt Olson on the carom. He danced out of the way. And Riley in scoring position now. Marcelo Zuna stands on deck, the 2-2. Swing, and that ball's rifled into right field. That's going to get down base hit. It's going to go off the glove of McCarthy, bobbles it. Austin Riley will score, and Matt Olson, he'll stay at first, so I don't think an error will be charged to McCarthy. Olson didn't advance an extra base. He, he recovered very quickly. Your Atlanta Braves have cut it. Good two-run game. He whacked that ball down the right field line. Still had some top spin and popped out of the glove as McCarthy tried to backhand it. Marcelo Zuna comes to the plate. He had a three-run bomb his last time up. First pitch is a 94-mile-an-hour fastball inside for a ball. It's 1-0. Marcelo Zuna, a double, a three-run shot, two runs, four RBI. On deck is Harris. The pitch taken right down the pipe, 94 miles an hour. It's one and one. Braves six, Diamondbacks eight. Bottom of the seventh. Good old-fashioned barn burner, the 1-1. One, one. Swing, and that ball's hit hard on the ground through the wicket into left field, down for a base hit. And your Atlanta Braves have runners on first and second. One out. And Michael Harris come into the plate. That ball was smoked. Marcel Ozuna now just a triple away from the cycle. How about that?
They're going to have a quick powwow on the mound out there. While they do that, let's turn back time. On this date, we picked the year of 1973, and it is chock full, so that's where we're going. On this date, 1973, about four. There was actually six big things that happened, but we picked four of them. On this date, 1973, in Major League Baseball, Richard Nixon becomes the first president to throw the ceremonial first pitch on opening day in a contest held outside Washington, D.C. Nolan Ryan and the Angels beat the Royals at Anaheim Stadium 3-2 to two at the ball game. Michael Harris digs in, runners on first and second. The pitch. Swing, and that ball is down for a base hit. It's going to get down and where, it, where the green grass grows. Here comes Matt Olson. The throw is up the line, and your Atlanta Braves have made it 8-7, to seven, coming all the way back, trailing at 1.6-0, and here we go, a one-run ball game. Tried to throw that slider, and it hung. Money Mike smokes it into right field. Good piece of hitting by Harris. And that'll bring Orlando to the plate. The Magic Kingdom will step in. He's been chasing that bender off the plate tonight. We'll see if he can straighten that up. The first pitch on the way is inside. They tried to throw a slider or it, slider to him outside, but it drifted inside. It's 1-0. They miss inside. He, he can absolutely drill it. The 1 0, runners on first and second, one out, bottom of the seventh inning. The pitch, swing and a miss, chase that slider again. It's 1 and 1. On this date, 1973, once again, the New York Yankees became the American League team to abandon their flannel uniforms in favor of polyester. The team's new look on the road features white piping around the world's New York. As the one one misses inside two and one, New York on the front of the, on the front and numbers on the back. It's hard to believe that they wore flannel. Until 1973, I would have thought that would have dissipated sometime in the 60s. So a two one count. The pitch, swing, and that ball is hit high and deep into center field, drifting back on the track. Corbin Carroll makes the catch. And Ozuna will tag up. We've got runners on the corners. Two outs. Arcia gave it a ride, but could not get that ball far enough. Eight to seven year score, runners on the corners. On this day in 1973 as well on opening day at Three Rivers Stadium in front of a crowd of 51,695, the Pirates retire Roberto Clemente's uniform number 21. The Pittsburgh right fielder died in a plane crash on New Year's Eve, attempting to provide relief to earthquake victims in Nicaragua. The first pitch on the way to Travis Darno to swung on and swatted down the line foul. It's 0-1. Brave 7. Snakes eight, bottom of the seventh, two outs. Jarvis kicks and deals. Oh, mercy. Slider that was about belt high. Travis took it. It's 0-2. You would have loved to have seen him take a swing at that one. Those are the type that leave the building. But instead, we got an 0-2 count. Travis, who's 0-3, for 3, two ground outs and a strikeout, the pitch. Swing, and that ball's laced down the right field line. Foul just past the tarps. Harris was on his horse. If that ball stays fair and gets past Walker, the Braves would have had the lead. So we'll do it 0-2. Runners on the corners. Two outs. Bottom of the seventh. The pitch. Inside, one and two. So a one-two count. We 
We got one more turn back time. It's kind of a lengthy one, so we'll probably hold off on that one. It it is also 1973. A lot of stuff happened in 1973 on this day. The one two pitch swung on, chopped over to third, scooped up by Suarez. He'll have an easy play, five three put out to end the inning. But not before your Atlanta Braves put two on the board and cut it to one. We'll head to the eighth, climbing up the backs of the Diamondbacks. So here's what I think you should do. You should write letters to all of the people in your life who have wronged you, but who you don't want to have in your life anymore, and then throw them in the fire and burn them. Okay, but what do I do with the letter? What would you say is your number one holiday film that you have to watch every year? My favorite holiday film, you know what? It's got to be Elf, because once again, John Favreau, I don't know if I'm saying it right, and Will Ferrell just knocking it out the park. Could have said your own movie. Do I have a Christmas movie? Which one is mine? Oh, the holiday! Obviously the holiday. Nancy Myers, genius. Let's do this. We're baseball players. I'm gonna buy a brand new wood bat, take one swing, and it's gonna snap. We're baseball players. I spend more time warming up than I actually do playing catch. We're baseball players. We're all addicted to caffeine. We're baseball players. I'm gonna overthrow you in catch play and say, that's my bad. But in reality, don't care. We're baseball players. We wear Oakleys everywhere we go because how are you gonna know I'm raw at baseball? We're baseball players. I'm gonna go down looking on three pitches, and when the dugout asks how the pitcher was, I'm going to say he sucks. We're baseball players. I'm going to bring a fresh bag of seeds to the game, and they're going to be gone by the end. We're baseball players. We're going to reference the movie Benchwarmers anytime we get a chance. What are you doing? Eating day-old donuts. My friend Terrence, he's the manager. He leaves them out back for me. Why? It's called eating your feelings, ass bag. Mom's going to walk into the bus till I'm 40, all right? If you ever want to break into Randy Johnson's house, you might want to think again. When being interviewed about gun violence in 1995, Johnson was quoted as saying, I don't own a gun, but I keep a bag of baseballs near our bed. If someone breaks in, they better be wearing a batting helmet because I'm going to throw out their head. For over half a century, I've had to live with the fact that I dropped a ball in a World Series. Oh yes, you're the guy that dropped that fly ball, aren't you? And for years and years, whenever I'd be introduced to somebody, they'd start saying something and then stop, you know. Afraid of hurting my feelings. John McGraw felt so bad for his center fielder that he raised Snodgrass's salary $1,000. Welcome back to Braves Country Baseball. Your Atlanta Braves trail by just one run. And A.J. Minter will come in. Minter. Come set. The first pitch on the way is a 90-mile-an-hour cutter right there for a strike. It's 0-1. Minter will face the top of the order, Marte, Carroll, and then Gurriel. Braves have the infield on the shift playing back. Olsen halfway between first and second, the 0-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. Over the top, it's 0-2. The 0-2, lefty, righty, Darno sets up outside, down and away, try to get him to chase one in the dirt, one and two. So a 1-2 count. Minter comes set, the southpaw fires. Swung on, pops it up, out of play, just fighting that one off. To stay alive. Tell Marte two for three, a solo and a home run double. He's batting 378 on the year with three home runs. The one two pitch inside 96 mile an hour fastball misses two and two. San Diego leads San Francisco four nothing in the second inning. Out in San Fran. The 2-2 pitch. Swing and fouls it back. Off the hands. We'll do it again. So a 2-2 count. The pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Right over the top. 
yak him, went away. Starting to think Cattell Marte wasn't human, but we finally got him out. Lefty lefty matchup Corbin Carroll to the plate. He'll take the first pitch high and inside for a ball one and oh. Braves seven, Diamondbacks eight, top of the eighth inning. Braves once trailed this game six to nothing. The pitch. Right there for a strike. Cutter on the inner edge. Evens up the count one and one. So a 1-1 one, one count. Minter lets her fly. Swing and chops it foul over towards the right side. Do it again. It's one and two. This speed, the last thing you want to see is a Baltimore chopper with Corbin Carroll. By the time that ball comes down, he could be standing on second. The, the one-two from Minter. Swung on and fouls that back. Do it again. Obviously, Marte and Suarez are in prime form. We've been fortunate that we didn't catch Corbin Carroll during a hot streak. Can't imagine facing this offense with all of them clicking. And I'm sure they say the same thing about us when <laughs> we're putting up the runs. Refresh this real quick. So a one two count. Stoppage in play. As Mark Rippinger gets back behind home plate. Lefty lefty standing on deck is Guriel. Mentor comes set. The red glove flies, and so does the ball. Swing and fouls that down the line. Over the third base dugout, we'll do it again. Braves infield is playing back on the pull. The one-two pitch just misses inside two and two. So a two-two count. Remember, the Braves at one point had Tyler Matzik warming up in the bullpen. He could be coming in for the ninth. Or they could decide to go back to eyeglasses again. The 2-2. Swing and pops it up high in the sky. Coming in, chasing his Kelnick. Shallow center left field. He'll make the catch. Right in front of Riley, and that'll end the end. No, I'm sorry, that's two down. I was ready to go ahead and back out in front of myself. So two down. I want to see these Braves bats go back at it. Got a feeling there's more to come. Lourdes Goriel is coming to the plate. He's two for four, two singles, a run, batting 324, three home runs. The first pitch swung on and pops it up high in the sky into right field. Not very deep playable. Acuna will close that yellow glove of his and that'll end the inning. Three up, three down. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth. Kelnick in the top of the order coming to the dish. I just want to let you know that if I'm on your for you page, you probably smoke too much weed and you're a little bit mentally instinct. 10 things you may not know about Honus Wagner. Number one, as a child, Johannes Peter was called Hans by his mother, which later evolved into Honus. Number two, three of his brothers went on to become professional baseball players as well. His older brother, Albert Butts Wagner, is credited with getting him his first tryout. Number three, in 1898, he won a distance contest in Louisville by throwing a baseball more than 403 feet. Number four, when the American League began in 1901, the Chicago White Sox offered Wagner a $20,000 contract, but he turned it down, choosing instead to stay with the Pirates. Number five, when he fielded grounders his huge hands collected large scoops of infield dirt which accompanied his throws to first like a tail of a con. Number six, in 1905 he signed a contract
contract to produce the first bat with a player signature, the Louisville Slugger, becoming the first sports person to endorse a commercial product. Number seven, in 1916, at the age of 42, he became the oldest player to hit in Inside the Park home run. Number eight, he starred as a sports hero in 1919 Spring Fever with Mo Howard and Shim Howard of the Three Stooges. Number nine, he was appointed as a deputy of the Allegheny County Sheriff's Office in 1942 after he ran for office of sheriff in law. And last but not least, number 10, a sporting goods store in downtown Pittsburgh was named after him and operated for 93 years before closing permanently in 2011. Sometimes the grass looks greener because it's fake. That's how you light a fire under their butts. You get them going with some inspiration. Too much talking, 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 too much talking. Hey, Torch. Hey, Lisa. You miss me? Not much. It is played everywhere, in parks and playgrounds and prison yards, in back alleys and farmers' fields, by small boys and old men raw amateurs and millionaire professionals. It is a leisurely game that demands blinding speed. Welcome back, Braves country. The Braves will climb back in this one. It's 8-7 to seven. Arizona was once 6 nothing. Max Fried, thanks for nothing. <laughs> he, got, he got another bad start by... Max Freed, the early, it's the early innings. If he can get out of that early inning, he's he's fine. Pitch pretty well after that. The first pitch on the way to Kelnick is swung on and foul back out of play. It's 0-1. Got a pitching change for the Snakes. The right-hander, Luis Frias, fires the 0-1 pitch to Kelnick. That ball is smoked into the right field corner, and that is down for a base hit. Kalnick is rounding first, heading to second, and it's a double for the J.K. Kid. That kid is money, baby. Got to come up with a better nickname for him is the J.K. Kid. That's all I've come up with so far. Mainly because he's a left-hander that played in Seattle. The first thing I thought, outfielder, the first thing I thought of was the kid. Griffey, we'll come up with something before it's all said and done. So that brings Ronald Acuna Jr. to the plate, tying run at second. The first pitch on the way, 89-mile-an-hour cutter. Right there for a strike, it's 0-1. Acuna, one for fourth, a single, and a run scored. The 0-1 pitch. Swing, and that ball's going to get down for a base hit into right field, a slow roller. Here comes Kelnick. He's flying around. He is safe, and the ball gets away from, from the fielder, and Ronald Acuna Jr. will end up on second. It'll be a single, and I believe E4. I'll have to double see that. Rays have tied it 8-8 eight to eight in the eighth. Crazy eights across the board here in Hotlanta. Cunha inside out of that pitch. And that was, oh, that was McCarthy. The ball just came out of the back of his hand. He was going to throw it and lost the grip. <laughs> Holy cow. So Cunha on second. The first pitch on the way to Ozzy Albies swung on, chopped off the plate foul. It's 0-1. You do wonder if Acuna may take off. He could get over to third with less than an out. He can get over to third with no outs. This line, if you'd think you'd get him in. Because of that threat, they don't have quite the the the, the uh, shift on for Ozzy. They do have the shift, but it's not as significant. The 0-1's in the dirt. It's 1-1. One one. The one one free us comes set righty lefty matchup open stance from Ozzy time is called by Moreno it'll reset the clock I don't believe that they no they did not the one one pitch outside wide two and one sometimes if you don't call that in time they'll They'll ring you up with the extra 
the timed out ball, but he got it just in time. So a 2-1 count to Ozzy. Acuna stands on second, bouncing back and forth. Righty, lefty, the pitch. Swing, and that ball's chopped foul down the first baseline. We'll do it again. It's 2-2. Two and two. Eight runs, 14 hits for your Atlanta Braves, and one error. Arizona, eight runs, 12 hits, and two errors. An old-fashioned barn burner. A shootout like the OK Corral, the 2-2 pitch. High and out of the zone, ball three, a full count to the Wiz, and the rake is standing on deck. The Braves needing a run to take the lead here in the bottom of the eighth. The 3-2 pitch. Swing, and that ball's hammered over to right side. Be scooped up by Cattell Marte. He'll flip it over to first. 4-3 put out, but on the play. Ronald Acuna Jr. heads on down to third. They'll have to pull in the infield with the rake at the plate. That's not desirable for anybody. You can't really walk them. If you do, Matt Olson will come lumbering up to the box. Riley, two for four, a double, a single, two runs, the pitch. Swing, and that ball's chopped foul back behind home plate. 97 miles an hour. He was bringing it. It's on one. Braves eight, Snakes eight. The infield is in. They're on the grass. The 0-1 pitch inside almost gets them. Slider one and one. So a 1-1 one -one count. Braves trying for some late game dramatics once again here at Truist Park. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Swing, and that ball's hammered through the infield. That is a base hit. That is a run, and your Atlanta Braves have taken the lead. It's 9-8, to eight, and we ain't done yet. 9-8 to eight your score. Atlanta GA, home of your Atlanta Braves, has become the comeback kids once again in 2024. Austin Riley smoked that one through the infield, slammed the bat down as he was running towards first, yelling, let's go. Or at least that's the clean version. And the Braves lead it nine to eight. They're having a powwow on the mound. I believe we're going to get a pitching change. We'll be back in a flash here on Braves country. What do you say when someone says you're not my cup of tea? I drink coffee anyway, so. We're dog owners. We're going to say the word nakey anytime we take off our dog's collar. Someone's nakey. We're dog owners. Of course, we're going to wake up to Diaria on the floor at two in the morning. We're dog owners. We're going to wait outside in the freezing cold for five hours for our dog to do their business, but instead they're going to sniff every blade of grass. We're dog owners. We're going to pay the vet over a thousand dollars just to find out that our dog has a little tummy ache. We're dog owners. If you ask to see a photo of our dogs, we're going to show you way more than just one. In fact, I have a whole presentation ready, so you better sit down. We're dog owners. Of course, they each have their own personal stockings for Christmas. If your name is Becca and I can't call you Becca, I don't want to be your friend. I love King Kelly. I just love King Kelly. It's one of the great stories, my favorite. It was a day when he was sitting on the bench, and the rule at that time was that if you wanted to substitute for a player, all you had to do was announce yourself. So a foul ball comes in the direction of the bench. Kelly stands up, yells out, Kelly now catching for Boston. Catches the ball, and it's recorded as an out. This is, this is the, uh, the trickster, this is the, the villain, this is the fool. He is also a great, great player. He is all the wonderful archetypes of, of baseball wrapped into one. And he also managed to drink himself to death before he hit the age of 40. So that's also an archetype, alas, in baseball. Kyle Nelson comes in to face Matt Olson. The first pitch is just off the plate, but called for a wide strike. Mike Ripperger, it's over. 
Kyle Nelson, left-hander out of San Francisco, California. Drafted by the Cleveland Indians in 2017, the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss, it's 0-2. Matt Olson stands at the plate. Austin Riley stands at first. The Braves have come screaming back to take a 9-8 lead after down 6 nothing in the first. Another bad outing by Max Fried. The 0-2, high and inside. Little chin music busting them back. It's one and two. Kyle Nelson drafted in the 15th round by the Indians in 17. Olsen two for three, a double, a single, two runs, an RBI. Lefty, lefty, the pitch. Swung on, that ball is belted deep down the right field line. Just foul. It went into the upper deck. In fact, if you're in the Atlanta, Georgia area, duck. It could be coming in to a backyard near you. He absolutely smoked that ball, just couldn't keep it straight. About 10 to 15 feet right of the foul pole. The one-two pitch outside wide. Two and two. I don't think that shocked anybody that Nelson's next pitch was going to be away. <laughs> Nelson in the infield. About got whiplash tracking that ball. The two, two. Swing and that ball's chopped off the plate. Three and two. So a three, two count. Braves trailed six, nothing in the first. Eight to two in the fifth and then they came the 2-2 two -two pitch down and away ball three so a 3-2 count you know they say it about a lot of teams but it's true with this Braves offense the last few years the game is just never over they're not always going to come back and but you, you can never give up the 3-2 pitch inside ball four the ice house will head on down to first the rake will chug it on up to second. And the Big Bears coming to the plate. And if we can get some kind of weird bounce, he is a triple away from the cycle. How about that? Lefty righty matchup. The first pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. It's 0-1. Maybe if the ball ricocheted off the wall and the outfielder fell down, we could get a triple. The, one of the most least likely people in Major League Baseball to get a cycle with Marcel Luzuna. That ball that got fouled off got a piece of Moreno. They're checking on him. Lavula, the manager of the Diamondbacks, is out there checking on him, too. Good job by Lavula, I believe. As I'm looking at the replay, yeah, it got him in the family jewels. So he's going to need a second to, uh, to catch his breath, rightfully so. We've all been there. Well, at least half of us have been. <laughs> So runners on first and second, one out. Nelson coming in to try to keep the Braves at nine to eight. Atlanta scored three in the fifth. First, first they scored two in the fourth, then three in the fifth, two in the third, uh, two in the seventh, excuse me, and two in the eighth. We hope we don't have to go to bat in the ninth. Last night it was a walk off after trailing. Big early in the 10th. The 0 1 pitch. Swing and a miss over the top. Cutter. It's 0 2. Marcelo Zuna down to his last strike. Standing on deck. Michael Harris, the second. The 0 2. Pitch on the way. Down and away. Try to get a chase that slider. 1 and 2. 
Good take by Marcel. They're hoping to get him to roll over that and hit into a double play. They are in double play depth in the infield. Though pulling, playing him to pull the one, two pitch just got a piece of that. Maybe a stitch or two to stay alive. Taps it off the plate foul. We'll do it again. They're at the half at the final four. UConn leads Alabama by four. The one, two pitch. Lefty, righty, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him with the four-seam fastball, 90 miles an hour, up around chest high to away. So two down. And Michael Harris, the second, will come to the plate. Harris. Big hit his last time up. First pitch on the way to Harris is sawed off foul. Back behind the backstop, it's 0-1. Michael Harris is two for four. A lot of crooked numbers. In fact, the only people that base hits for the Braves tonight, Darnold, Arcia, and Albies. Everybody else has double digit or has multiple hits, excuse me. The 0-1 right there at the knees, 0-2. <laughs> that would be something double digit <laughs> base hits by by one player so an 0-2 count runners on first and second two outs Harris trying to find a way to get those runs home the swing and a miss strike and that'll end the inning but not before your Atlanta Braves put two more on the board we'll head to the ninth inning ought to be eyeglasses time we'll be back in a flash Join the Country Club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one-of-a-kind emojis, to display your Braves pride throughout the ball game. You'll also get instant access to our video drops, members-only chat, wallpapers, and more is on the way. Help support Braves Country Radio. Join the Country Club today. Denton True Young was an ungainly, out-of-place farm boy when he came to the Cleveland Spiders in 1890. Even his teammates took to calling him Cy, short for Cyrus, because he seemed so countrified. But Cy Young held the Chicago White Stockings to just three hits to win his first game, and then went on to win 510 more before he was through, a record never even approached by any other pitcher. Cy came to stand for Cyclone. Who is on first? What are you asking me for? I don't know. Welcome back to Braves Country. Mac McGee and the armchair quarterbacks. Welcome back to Braves Country. One last turn back time as we head to the top of the ninth inning. Braves leading by one. On this date, 1973, Fenway Park. Ron Blomberg of the Yankees becomes the first designated hitter in Major League history. In the historic plate appearance, he draws a first inning bases loaded walk on a 3-1 pitch off of Louis Tiant. And will become the first designated hitter to get a hit when he singles in the third in a 15 to five route by the Red Sox over the Bronx Bombers, Bronx Bombers. And in Oakland Coliseum on that same day, twins A's Tony Oliva becomes the first DH to Homer off of future hall of famer catfish Hunter. Minnesota wins that game eight to three. Rossiel Iglesias eyeglasses comes to the plate. First pitch on the way. And a swing and fouls it out of play. It's 0-1. If you haven't noticed it, Braves Country have added the eyeglasses to the to the emojis for the country club members. The 0-1 pitch. Inside, 1-1. One one. The more folks that we add, the more of these perks that they allow us to add. So I'm always checking it to see if we get to the next level. 
the one one pitch swing and a miss it's one and two so a one two count Christian Walker one for four an RBI single in the first scored a run the pitch swung on and lifted high into center field not very deep playable Michael Harris the second makes the catch and there's one away What a game this has been. What a series this has been so far. If the Braves can hold on here, they'll try to go for the sweep tomorrow with Chris Sale on the mound. First pitch from Iglesias to Suarez is right there below the knees. Just missed. It's 1-0. Oh, 83-mile-an-hour oh. slider. The 1-0. Oh. Swing, and that ball's hammered over to third. Is it fair? It is just foul. Riley had it. He would have had him out by a mile instead. Suarez will head on back down to the plate. I think Riley thinks it was fair. Eh. So here's the problem. Riley was kind of blocking his view. The ball just has to go fair over the bag. It doesn't matter where it lands. It's just go fair over the bag. Riley probably has an argument, but you'll never get that overturned because of the view. If it had hit the chalk, you would have the argument, but until they start putting little cameras right there, there's just no way. In the postseason, they have cameras in the bags, but they're not pointing in that direction, though they should be. So Iglesias will go back to work. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Suarez. Inside almost gets him. 95 miles an hour, 2-1. and one. The 2-1. Inside, that one does get him. Suarez will head down to first. Iglesias... Did not want to do that. Put the tying run on first with one out. I would say they'll probably pinch run for Suarez. That's the last place you want to hit Suarez. You hit him right in the the armor. He's not going to feel that at all. So Iglesias was so close to having two outs. Yeah, they they are going to pinch run. That's what I figured. First pitch on the way to Jock Peterson. It's a swing and a miss strike over the top. It's on one. The 0 1. Down below the knees. One and one. So a 1 1 count. Pitch on the way. Peterson drops a bunt. Glacius has it. Fires it over to first. Good throw. And it's a 1-3 put out. Two away. Jace Peterson is the runner. They they hadn't been updating it on the on the tracker, but Jace Peterson is the runner. It's now standing at second base. So he's got pretty good speed. First pitch on the way to Moreno. Drifts across the plate for a strike. It's 0-1. The 0-1 in the dirt, 1-1. One one. So a 1-1 one, one count. Runner on second. One out. The pitch. Swing, and that ball's rifled over towards Arcia. He's got it. Fires it over to first, and it's a 6-3 put out, and you're Atlanta Braves.
Braves win, Braves win, your Atlanta Braves win. Whiskey for my men, beer for my horses. Atlanta, nine, Arizona, eight, in a hard fought game where Atlanta was down six, nothing. We got the post game show coming right up. Keep it locked in here on Braves country. We'll give out game balls and everything here in a moment. Join the Country Club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one-of-a-kind emojis, to display your Braves pride throughout the ball game. You'll also get instant access to our video drops, members-only chat, wallpapers, and more is on the way. Help support Braves Country Radio. Join the Country Club today. You're in Braves country. in Braves country as we're going to set the, the screen up here. It's always a little bit of a, here we go. Atlanta Braves win that one nine to eight. How about those Braves? We won't keep you here all night. Now you will probably want to get and watch the second half of the uh, college basketball game, but Braves win it nine to eight. And there are so many ways you can go with this. Go Okay. So first of all, and by the way, the, uh, the the phone line is open. I thought I put it on the screen, but I guess it fell off. Uh, let me put it back up there again. Um, here we go. Uh, if you want to call in, there's the number. Uh, the Braves get out. I got to refire that. If you're trying to call, the, uh, the line didn't fire up at first. There we go. It's open now. Um, the Braves get out in 6 nothing. We got to quit falling behind in the first inning by a bunch of runs. It's been way too, too much stress on the offense. But we fall behind 6 nothing, and then credit to Max Freed because the second, third, and fourth inning, he went out there and fired zeros across. Got us back in it. 6-2, to two, goes back out there the fifth, and he's almost out of the jam. And he gets what I consider a, a questionable call. But anyways... Two more runs come across the board. It's eight to two. And you're thinking, ah, oh, just about time that we take a step forward. We take two steps back. And then there in the in the fifth inning, the Braves come up. And Marcelo Zuna hits a home run to make it eight to five. A three run shot. And that really put it put us back in the game for real. We get a single by Riley in the seventh, or excuse me, a single by Olsen to score Riley in the seventh, and then Harris singles to score Olsen. We got a ball. And all in all, I feel like the game ball's got to go to Marcelo Zuna. Almost comes up 
with Emma by Riley. Hey, this is Jamie Payne. Can you hear me good? Hey, Jamie, if if you got a device going in the background, just uh, turn it down. But, yeah, I, I can hear you. All right, yeah, that was me last night a couple of times. I'm sorry about that. That's all right, Jamie. What, uh, what you got for us tonight? Uh, well, I think Ozuna, uh, yeah, he, uh, he came up big again, had, got another home run. Uh, I'd like to see Max Reed get a little bit better start in the first inning or two, you know, but I, I think he'll come around and do that. But at least he, he settled down a little bit. Yeah, he, but, uh, he finally, well, you know, the, the bullpen come through again. Yeah, and like, and like we were talking about during the during the game, like the last thing you wanted to see was Atlanta have to bail him out again, take him out of the first because he's never going to get right if he's constantly having to come out of the game. So I'm glad he was able to. I mean, at some point, you just got to let him sink or swim, and you hope the offense can can get them back in the game. But yeah, it was a great. Uh, I, all in all, if you, if you throw that first inning away, it was a, it was a good outing because he he got back, ended up. One of his biggest problems that we've seen early in the season is when there's runners on, he he's he, he's not working well out of the stretch. And so he's got to get that figured out because as soon as you get a runner on, he seems to just lose his command. When he had the shutdown yeah. innings in the second, third, and fourth, he was, he, he was coming f- from the stretch and he was absolutely, you know, money. And that curveball started working. So... It's look. It looks like Spencer Strider is going to be gone for a long time. I doubt he pitches again this year. Yeah, that, Ho- that's going to hurt us. Yeah. Hopefully, we, we, you know, we get good news, but and hopefully he can be back at some point this year. But it doesn't look good. But the simple fact of the matter is, if you don't have Spencer Strider, Max Fried has got to start pitching better. I mean, he's. I mean, he's got to. And I and I know he knows that exactly. And I mean, hell, he's going to be a free agent. I mean, you get, normally free agents; yeah. th- th- these are the years that they are putting out their best numbers so they can get a big contract. <laughs> you exactly. Know? So, and maybe, maybe they'll do a trade. Who knows? Yeah, I think I think it's most likely uh, that the trade would come much later in the season because you can't go out there and start trading away pieces when you don't even know what you have as a team yet. Because what if you start getting multiple injuries then then you're just chasing across the board i'd say what's going to happen in the very near future is we're going to get uh probably long term i would think it would be bryce elder we might get a spot start from someone else next week to fill his hole but i would think bryce elder is the uh is the heir apparent to that role yeah. but aj smith shaw about him I've, yeah yeah, go with the young guys. Yeah, see what they can do, and then uh, yeah, just see what you can go from there. You know, basically go from there. I mean, you, we got some arms in the in the minors, so like you said, uh, Bryce Elder, uh, he he's on the roster right now, right? Bryce Elder, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he. Uh, oh, no, the, no, no, uh, he's, Bryce Elder is not on the roster right now. No, he's. Sorry, the, I keep forgetting yeah. that that screen starts sharing stuff that I don't, I don't want him to share. Um, yeah, but uh, well, I don't want to hold you on here Bryce, too long. I don't know. Bryce people. Elder is but, is a down in AAA, so Bryce Elder would have to be called up. He's on the forty man roster, right. but he's down in AAA. Right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, at least the bullpen and like you said, free kind of he settled down. The bullpen go around, and the Braves never give up. And last night, I almost t- said, "You don't count them out unless they're down ten to nothing in the eighth inning." And it was almost kind of like that in a way. But they started scoring some runs there. What a six inning or I'm seven. Not, or this offense, I'm not going to put anything past them this year because. The simple fact of the matter: there's not an automatic out anywhere in the in the in the order, so they could put together runs yeah. in bunches. If you think about the fact what they've done so far, Ronald Acuna Jr. has not been Ronald Acuna Jr. He hasn't even hit a home run, right? 
Ozzy no, Albie's has scuffled here in in Atlanta. He they had a good beginning of the season, but he's not hitting. You know, he's not he has not caught fire yet. Uh, Olsen swinging a good bat. Riley's starting to come around. Jared Kelnick is just killing it. And but mm. considering the fact we're doing all mm-hmm. this with Ronald Acuna Jr. to yet to go yard, I don't he 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 has any. I, th- I think he's only got one double. So just think and what one happens. stolen base maybe. What's that? Yeah, and one stolen base. Right. I think. Right. Unless he got one tonight. Right. But Ozuna, Ozuna's swinging Ozuna's a good bat. Ca- Ozuna's carrying this team right now between him. And right now you've got that 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 back to back pop of Ozuna and Olson, but then also right behind Ozuna, Michael Harris is, is swinging the bat well. I mean this mm-hmm. this offense is just the the sky's the limit. The question is going to be, can the starting pitching start pitch? Because the bullpen's doing a fine job, and I and usually bullpens don't even hit their stride till June, right? So yeah, we, we don't want to wire them out though, right? You know. But they're gonna have so, to, they're gonna have to get some big innings from Elder. They're gonna have to get some big innings from Shaver. And I would say there's gonna come time to time where they're gonna need big starts from Vines and big starts from Winnins and maybe Dylan Dodd. We we may. I heard a rumor uh, this morning that Dylan Dodd could be the one that gets filled in at the very beginning, and then Elder is the long term. So Dylan Dodd would just go into the Met series and eat some innings, almost like an opener. Right. So, well, I mean, well, the future is, uh, you know, for us to see. So, uh, go Braves, and uh, you know, that's just uh that was a great game. It uh, sure was. Well, I mean, <laughs> all right, Jamie. But, uh, well, I enjoy. I appreciate you I calling this in. And, all right, buddy. All you right, have a good. Yes, sir. Go Braves. Yes, sir. Go Braves. Call us back anytime. All right, so the Braves right. win it, and we're now five and two. And the Phillies did win today, so they keep pace. They're one and a half back, both four and four. And I know it's early, but you're already starting to see the gap between the Braves, Phillies, and the rest of the division. The Mets are three and a half yeah. back. The Nationals are three and a half back. Did you have anything else, Jamie? I, I'm sorry, I, I thought I thought you hung up. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering. I was like, okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. I'm sorry. I'll hang up, buddy. Okay. I didn't know if you were still talking. All right. We're good. Yes, sir. Go Braves. Chop on. Go, go Braves. Um, So, we're three and a half in front of the Mets, three and a half in front of the Nationals. Six, man, the, the Marlins. I, I'll tell you right now, you can, you can never say this about baseball. But I'm going to say it about baseball. We talked about this in the Reds podcast this morning. The Marlins season's over. They're 0-9 in a division where they're not going to catch. Let's say the Braves have just astronomical injuries and they they can't bounce back. It's not going to happen to both them and the Phillies. They're 0-9. You can't make that up, and they're not getting a wild card. Already, we were talking about this uh, this morning on uh, Reds country, we, we're going to do that about once, uh, about once every 10, 10 days or so. We're doing Reds country. We're doing Red Sox country next week. But we kind of take a look at the entire National League, and you can already say goodbye to the Nationals, the Marlins, and the Rockies. Welcome to Braves Country Radio. Who do we got? Hi, man. This is Brian. Hey, Brian. How are you? Doing good, man. How are you? Good. What can we do for you today? Oh, man, I just want to talk about uh, Strider, you know, his uh, his injuries. And, you know, Bryce Elder is a key to this season, man. Strider said it back in the uh, the Braves fan fest that, um, you know, he thought that Bryce Elder was going to be the key to this season. Whoever knew that it was going to come down to, you know, Strider getting hurt and, uh it's probably going to be Bryce Elder called up, and uh, he's going to be big for us. Yeah, I, I would expect that. Now, Bryce Elder pitched pretty well last week. I saw that he threw six innings, uh, seven strikeouts, and no walks. 
I didn't see what his latest start was and where that fell fell on. But he should be lined up. They may have to have to bring someone up to make a spot start, but he should be lined up to pitch sometime next week. I that 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 would be my best guess is that it's going to be Bryce Elder as the long term. But you may see a Dylan Dodd or someone come in and uh, eat some innings next week in a spot start to just kind of give them some length. Um, yeah. But yeah, Bryce sure. Elder, if Bryce Elder is the Bryce Elder we saw at the beginning of 2023 before the All-Star break, we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Cause Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it takes time for these young guys to, you know, to, 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 to come in and, and build up the stamina that it takes to go 162, man. It's a long season, so. Uh, these young guys just, uh, you know, they need to work, do what it takes, and you know, put the innings in and, and build up stamina to go go a full season. And it's funny because we've talked about this all off season how the plan would be for Ronaldo Lopez to eventually be in the bullpen, and now it looks like he's going to be get bumped up to the number four starter in the rotation, and hopefully. And how good did he look? Yeah, great. He looked phenomenal. I'm just, but. The one thing I'll say to to just kind of temper our expectations is it was against the White Sox and it was in the cold weather. And so Good. what's he going to look like in the summer after he's – because last few years he hasn't thrown more than 65, 66 innings, somewhere in that neighborhood. So what's going to happen yeah. when, he, when he gets wear and tear on his arm, just like Elder did last year, is he going to run out of gas? So I, I do worry about that because I still believe – for us to punch our ticket to the World Series in October, Ronaldo Lopez is going to be a key part of that bullpen in the back. Because yeah, yeah, I agree with you. You know, and it, look, this whole deal goes to show you how great, you know, Alex Santopoulos is at, at, you know, doing what he does in our, in our whole scouting department. Um, you know, we've got a plethora, you know, our, our – our, our minor league program overall is not ranked very highly, but – if you look at our pitching and the depth that we've got with our young guys coming up through the system, I mean, it's, uh, you, we've got one of the best farm systems there is, in my opinion, on the pitching side. And that says a lot about what Alex has been able to do and also a lot about what his, uh, you know, his, his scouting staff has been able to accomplish. Yeah, and when you see some of these rankings where the Braves' farm system is ranked so low, it's because most of their quote-unquote prospects are already up starting in the major leagues. Absolutely. You know, Michael Harris the second. What he was not expected to be here this quickly. They most most projections had him for middle of this year, and yeah, you have guys like him. They don't even think about guys like Kelnick, who's realistically still a prospect, right? Because yeah. he came over yeah. in the trade from Seattle, so they don't. He he was never ranked a part of our system as a prospect, but he has been phenomenal. And he is, hey, look, we're only a week. Yeah, I, I, we're only a week into the into the season here, and and uh, you know, it wasn't what three weeks ago, four weeks ago that that everybody's like, oh, what's going on with Akel? And he's not doing it in spring training. This guy's done nothing but perform since the season started. Uh, I know he had a good week last week or a uh, couple weeks in spring training, but since the season's been going, man, I'm so happy for this young kid. He's just been unbelievable. Uh, Ed says, or, um, Edward says that, uh, that elder pitched tonight and got hit pretty hard. That doesn't worry me as much about him getting hit hard. What it means is, so I, from what I take of it is what they were saying this morning. Is it because he was scheduled to pitch tonight? He was not, they, they weren't going to change that. In other words, they weren't all of a sudden going to bring him up and pitch, right? So they were yeah. going to have him pitch tonight, and then the idea would be that when Strider comes back around for his turn, which in theory would be Wednesday, that's when you could probably see Dylan Dodd eat some innings there mm. unless they go a different route. But two of his three outings now have at least been decent. I'm, I'm, st I'm not worried about Bryce Elder. I think that he just ran out of gas last, last year. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. Um Oh, his name is, is is slipping my mind, and I and I hate that right now. But uh, he he went through what Tommy John surgery 
uh, last year. Um, the pitcher that oh, was Ian that Anderson. Five, Ian Anderson. Yes. Ian Anderson. What I mean? How's he looking now? I mean, so, I, I, I'm so thinking he's coming been, back from injury. Yeah. So they've been earmarking Ian Ian Anderson. They, you know, anytime they say June, my my guess is it always gets. There's always a hiccup, and it'll be after the All Star break. Yeah, but yeah. Ian so, Anderson I mean, still, would be yeah. one hell of a an addition. And at the time when they yeah, were talking absolutely. about it, I thought to myself, "Well, where the hell is he going to fit?" And now all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. it's it's funny yeah. how things work out. Yeah, that's just what what Snicker say. I mean, how many pitchers did we end up using starters? Did we end up using last year? You know, I mean, it's it's, it's yeah. Just, we have uh, on uh, average, I, I counted it yeah. up. We on average over the last so this is our fourth season of doing uh, Braves Country Radio. Every one of those seasons, we have averaged over fourteen starting pitchers. Yeah, so and you need—I mean, you need that depth. You need those young guys. You just—I mean, it's, it's absolutely necessary. And I don't even count the guys who come in and do the opener for one. You, you know, like a like a Yanni Churis, right? Where, where yeah. they pick them up off yeah. the scrap heap just to eat an inning or two. Um, yeah, who was it? Absolutely. I saw someone talking about on. Tw- oh, they were talking about. In- I'm pretty sure the guy was serious just from the tone of the tweet, but he was talking about going and getting uh, his name slipping my mind. The, the, the kid that we, Oh, um, Oda Rizzi. I was like, man, it, it, oh, hasn't, okay. it, it hasn't gotten that drastic. Let's, let's, let's not go yeah, get it. Not I'm, yet. I mean, let's, let's yeah. yeah. I'm thinking let's, he's let's been on the couch. The young guys before we go there. Yeah. I'm thinking Oda Rizzi's probably like tinkering with something in his garage, you know, listening to this going, nah, man, I'm out, dude. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. All well, right, hey, Brian. man, I found you tonight. You oh, know, is that right? Um, yeah, yeah, this is the first time I've watched you, and, and thank you so much for what you do. Um, Appreciate you know, it. I, I won't say the, 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 the evil, you know, I, I don't know if you're going to let me say it or not, but the evil Bally Sports, you know, uh-huh. not letting everybody in Braves country watch, you know, the, the games. Right. Um, so. You know, but yeah, no, I appreciate everything everything you're doing, man. I'm gonna be tuning in, and um, you know, we're gonna subscribe and and, and get everything going. I, I appreciate what you do. Well, appreciate that, and uh, we we also have memberships to help support the channel. It's a, it's only two dollars and ninety nine a month, and basically it helps us, you know, bring this to y'all. And there are perks that go along with it as well. But uh, liking and subscribing yeah. helps a lot as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well worth it. Um, you, you bring a you bring a great service to Braves country, and, and we appreciate it. All right, Brian. Well, it was great talking to you. Call back anytime. We're, we're planning on most nights we're doing post game shows. The only one that we won't be doing in the near future uh, Monday night. I can't do it because I got to be up at five in the morning on Tuesday. So it makes oh. it kind of difficult. <laughs> Understandable. But all right, appreciate your time. Yes, sir. We're here Monday through Saturday, y'all. If any of y'all are, are are new to uh, Braves country, and, and Sundays is a uh, is a uh, as a chat day. We still put the put it up. Uh, let's see if we got any more callers. Good talking to you, Brian. Let me see if we open this up one more time. If anyone else has any more calls, if not, we're, we'll shut it down. See Margaret. Uh, what is she saying? Good question da, 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 about the pitching. Um, and yeah, I look. It's we'll, we'll hit that one more time in case folks are you know, you know kind of haven't been paying attention or just getting off work or whatever's been going on in your life. It looks like Spencer Strider is going to be done for the year. When they start talking about structural damage for your UCL, it usually follows the term Tommy John surgery. I hope to hell I'm wrong, but 99 times out of 100, that's what happens. Sometimes they will, if 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 it's just a sprain, it's not actual, you know, a tear. Sometimes they will shut the pitcher down for like four to six weeks and then try to build them back up. And then if that doesn't work, they would go ahead and have Tommy John. And that could be an option because if you think of it right now, you typically lose a pitcher, Tommy John, honest engine, 18 months. Well, if you shoot, shoot him down and shut him down right now and he gets Tommy John surgery, he's not pitching till 2026. So if you shut him down for four to six weeks and see what you got at that point, and then you have to have Tommy John surgery, he's still going to be ready for the spring of 2026. So it's an option, but I'm sure he's going to get a second and third opinion because this is 
the young man's uh, future on the line. He's this is the second Tommy John that he would have as well. But when you saw his fastball coming at 95, 96, and he was getting thwacked, you you worried about it. But I, I didn't want it. I tried to put it in the back of my mind last night during the broadcast because I didn't want to be the doomsdayer. But we'll probably know something more Monday, Tuesday. That'll probably be the the timeline somewhere in the middle of the Mets series. But we're going to go ahead and get out of here if we don't have any more calls. And um, the uh, Atlanta Braves win another great one, 9-8. to eight. Please like and subscribe. We're here Monday through Saturday for all your Braves games in every playoff game, every game in the postseason. And we also bring you spring training games. Sundays, we are here, but it's just a chat for those who might be new. We just put the chat up because we got to have to have some time to uh, to recharge the batteries. Until we get this to where it can be, it wants a full-time endeavor. We, You know, I can see seven days a week. But Y'all have a great one. Uh, Atlanta Braves win a great one, 9-8. to eight. Another come-from-behind victory. We'll go for the sweep tomorrow. It's Chris Sale Day. And let's be honest, the way people have been pitching, him or Lopez might be, the ace of this club right now. Y'all have a good one. Join the country club today. The first month is free. You'll have access to badges, one of a kind emojis to display your Braves pride throughout the ball game. You'll also get instant access to our video drops, members only chat, wallpapers, and more is on the way. Help support Braves Country Radio. Join the country club today.